is 757. It's the best podcast on the East Coast. No limit, you heard me? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. God damn! That, and it was just so, and it's real. I'm gonna sit in that bitch like that. You know? Black ass. You want a fortress? Dreadhead. Damn! No limit podcast with Shogun D Lo. So you said it back. Let me, let's start this over. Time and time again, we come back with the best of the best in the biz. Y'all already seen first season, so you actually already know what the name is. But for the ones that don't, we are the No Limit Podcast. Shorty had never asked for She leave mad sore Linking with this black horse Been getting mad bored Spinning on these whack tours And I'm too real for industry I should act more We watch Hulu when the test Look like a black horse She say love is the key More like a trap door My good fella white Feel like a black king But somehow find me Surrounded by black horse No land animal consumption Love turkey bacon You fucked up the theology Blood dirty apron My man's catching L's daily from the skirt she chasing He pop pills in Oak Grove A perky pagan She surfing naked Ride away for fortune Little mama rib showing Getting tiny portions Sparking bright lights Fighting for change Yeah That mighty more Mighty more Ladies and gentlemen of the 757, this is the best podcast on the East Coast. And you're now tuned in to the No Limit Show with your guy, Just Ed, D-Lo the Showgun. And like I say, every week, we bring the best of the best of the city in the building. You heard me? And tonight, we got a fan favorite. And I've been waiting. This day was going to come. We got Soba the DJ Yo. in the building. Check, check, Mike, check it, your boy, Sober, the DJ, a.k.a. the guy with the vibes. What up, just said? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, yo, this was a long time coming. I'm going to tell you why. Uh-oh. It's story time. We're jumping right into it. Let's yeah, we're we jumping right into it. Before we do an origin story mm-hmm. about your personal life, um, I want to say me and you, Sticky, and I think his name is Isaiah. Name. Or what's the guy's name that runs Team Lamb? Israel. Israel. My bad. I did not mean to say Isaiah. I don't know why that was in there. But anyways, you had a you spin it, you send it, we spin it event Mm -hmm. at the juice bar Mm -hmm. about a year and a half, maybe two years ago. Mm -hmm. One of the first events I've ever been outside to. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, that's fire. Yeah, so when the No Limit podcast, when it was just like a baby, a newborn, mm-hmm. n- didn't know what we was going to come out of it, me and D-Lo the Showgun and some of my other homies that was showing support, we came out and uh, that's crazy. we watched out on stage, we drunk some of the juice, 
Uh, uh, the sticky starter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out Q with the sticky starter. Yeah. Yeah. So, and at the end of the show, you know, we had my guy. He spilled the sticky starter because he mm-hmm. was dick. It had him lit. Had him lit. <laughs> I remember that day. Yeah. And we all sat down. Mind you, I was to the moon on both liquor and smoke. Mm. And I was like, yeah, man, this is what I'm trying to do. This is, uh, I, you know, I'm trying to make it bigger than what it is. Maybe we could be partners. We could do this, this, and this. And uh, Israel was looking at me like, oh, okay. And he showed me the building, the juice bar and stuff. And Q, he was like, he was like kind of in and out. He was like, all right, cool, 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 cool. And one of the things mm. that I remember from you saying, mm. you said, hey, man, don't don't push it. Don't push it too much. Mm-hmm. He was like, when the time comes, we're going to link. When the time comes, we're going to link and we're going to make it special. And I was like, okay. Sounds like me. And at first, I ain't going to lie. At first, I was like, damn. I was like, man, they do a lot of dope shit. I want to be part of the thing. And, you know, my homeboy was like, D-Lo was like, hey, man, maybe you're telling the truth. Just chill out. Mm-hmm. Then D-Lo and them walked to the car. And I was like, man, y'all sure? He was like, bro, we see you. I promise. And I was like, all right, cool. So I've been waiting for this day to say, boom, it happened. Yeah, it happened. Yeah, yeah. Check mark. It's yeah. it, it's done. Bomb drop. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that, that yeah. story. And ladies and gentlemen, that just goes to say, you never know what happens. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you keep being consistent, you keep following your dreams, you keep doing what you need to do to succeed. Things will be put in place when they need to be put in place. Absolutely. And it, it, did it take two years? Yes. But he's on the couch now. <laughs> I mean, it blinked. You blinked. Did, it went by. Like, you know, time flew by. It did. It know? did. It did. Because, I mean, learning the area, I'm still learning the area. Even though I've been living in the 757 for since 2015, I'm still learning the area, the the who's and who's not, the mm-hmm. the where to go, where not to go. It's not the like. of it all. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I've been watching everybody do their thing. And I'm just like, okay, now I'm about to step on the scene. And I, I, I want to see how everybody else feels. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I want to get people on the show. I want to, I want to hear their, their grievances, their, 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 the gratitudes, everything. But that's done with my, my backstory of mm-hmm. what happened. I want to get to know you for the audience, for, for myself, for, DJ Young Tay that's in the building. In the building. You know what I'm saying? Future DJ of the No Limit Podcast, I hope. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's get to know you a little bit, man. Who is Sober the DJ? Let's start from the beginning. Okay, starting from the beginning. I'm going to caveat off what you said first, and then I'm going to answer your question because you bring up a very valid like thing that I preach about a lot, right? I just I do a radio show Monday through Friday, and maybe two days ago, there was a kid who was thirteen when I met him, fourteen when I met him, and he was he was Trippy Red before Trippy Red dropped. This is like two thousand seventeen, sixteen, seventeen, right when Trippy Red like hit. Ooh. He was that that kid was him, and I'm like, yo, if he would have got like just a little guidance or just like that energy, there's no telling where he would get like right. So like. Just in that conversation we had in passing, and I know exactly what you're talking about because y'all were all over the fucking place. Y'all were just, <laughs> we were just like a controlled entity. Usually, like when I'm around, you'll notice like it's not a lot of movement around me. Like I know what the fuck is going on. You know what I mean? So when there's like a something else that's kind of out there, we're like, wait, what is that? Like we gotta see what's up with that. So we know, I know exactly, you know what I mean, who you were, <laughs> what was going on in that night. But all in all, it was like that quick little conversation, that gem, like yo. You'll get there, bro. Like, just take your time and, and do the shit. It gave you an itch you couldn't scratch. That one little thing has driven you to have a whole fucking building podcast and it's some more shit. You know what I mean? So it's like, I hope people who see this take that as something serious. Like, yo, you really, you never know how what you say can affect people. So always, like, try to lead with love type shit. But then also shine a light on me as far as, like, what I do here. It's not about spinning the records. Like, that's the easy part. That's the, that's the layup. Like right. it's not that. Like, I want to see more of us doing shit. Like, really constructive building, doing shit. You know what I mean? Like, I've put cameras in people's hands. I've put money in people's hands. I put all that shit, man. It, it's it. I can't take it with me, right? So it's like whatever. I just want to see motherfuckers doing it. So I commend you 
on staying true to your word and actually like being motivated and being that driving force for your team and like just building something. You know what I mean? Like this is more than a something, but still at some point it was just something and now it's way more than that. You know what I mean? And and with the trajectory to go way bigger than that. So again, commend you on that. Now, um, who am I? I'm a kid that grew up in Boston, man. Grew up Jamaican, Jamaican culture. Um, always wanted to be a DJ. Always been DJing in my room. I used to steal music on like uh, Bear Share, Kazaa. My first like DJing I did was um, I used to take cassette tapes. My mom had like LL Cool J cassette tapes. I used to take and put uh, what the fuck is that? Like toilet paper in the top. If you could dub over in this, you know, I'm sure I'm, like, I'm 31 by the way, everybody, right? If you put like toilet paper or just something. A piece. Some people just put a strip of tape over these like there's two holes on the top. You can dub over what's on the tape. You can re you can record over it. If you don't, it'll like every time you hit record, it'll like stop you from doing it. So I take that LL Cool J tape and record um eight eight point nine at night. It's uh it was an old radio station at eight to like twelve. They used to do mixes and sometimes hip hop, some was reggae, whatever. But I would go on there and just record the songs that I wanted to hear. And then like the next day during the day, because it was only on Sunday nights, so. The next day or whenever, I would play it and let it rock. And those were my first mixtapes, right? And then as time went by, I used to steal DVDs from my dad, like Pasa Pasa, which is, shout out to the Jamaicans, y'all know. Maybe some trainees know Pasa Pasa. But it was just like a night. Like Pasa Pasa was a uh, an event night. No different from, I don't know, Twerk Palooza. Shout out Big Will. No different from any other event night with names. Pasa Pasa was that one. And it was like the one. And they would burn DVDs and whatever. So I just watch those DVDs and look at the DJs like, damn, I want to be like them. Like, so I'd be in my room talking to nobody. I see you over there, girl, with the skirt and the, okay. Like, just practicing, just doing shit. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Until um, in life, man, it just, it every step drove me towards DJing, drove me towards the stage, drove me towards even high school. My first party was a, um, in sophomore year, did a house party. Shout out Miss Williams. She my first booking. Like she, she was actually my guidance counselor. She was like, "I'm gonna give you a shot." My first gig, I got three hundred dollars. A she, guidance counselor. My <laughs> guidance counselor, bro. Because it, I mean, maybe I just talked a good game or whatever. I don't know, but like, she was like, "You know what? I'm gonna give you a shot." Shout out Miss Wilson, Stacy Wilson. If you ever see this, didn't forget about you. Her and her husband too. Shout out uh, Richard, but um, which that's my dad's name. But anyway. Um, yeah, yo, like she, she gave me a shot. We were doing a fundraiser. She was trying to open up a school, like a charter school somewhere in, in this is South Jersey now. And, uh, yeah, bro, she gave me a shot, knocked it out the park. And I've been going crazy ever since, bro. Like army days and prior army. So that was a thing. And then that, 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 ladies and gentlemen, you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, someone hasn't been watching the show. Cause look, he ain't getting deep enough. You know what I'm saying? He ain't getting deep enough. Uh -oh. First and foremost, uh -oh. he said, Boston. Yeah. How long were you in Boston? Because, I mean, you're in Virginia now, so. So, yeah, there's a lot of shit in between us. So, I was in Boston from baby until, like, call it six, sixth grade. Six going on seventh grade. Yeah. And that was the hood, bro. Like, Boston was was that part. Like, the foundation of, like, I saw my first crack rock in Boston, crackheads, drug money, guns. I saw niggas get shot in Boston. Like, I was taking the buses. Like, that was life. I couldn't go outside at some points in my life because my mom was like, nah. Like, I, she sent me to live in Jersey with my grandmother because she's like, yo, I don't want you out here. My best friend in Boston, give you, like, a we're going deep, right? My best friend that I used to hang out with, whatever the fuck in Boston, He's currently serving 20 years Jesus. in prison. If I looked him up right now, you would see he has a picture of him robbing a bank with a gun to a lady's head with a lollipop in his mouth. And I'm like, leave it to this nigga to make it like humorous. We always told jokes. Like, we just some funny. And I just found it funny that you're robbing a bank. When did you make time to say, let's get this lollipop while you fucking got a gun on our head? And the, the transcript said, some shit of like, don't do nothing funny. I kill you. I, I've killed before and I'll kill again. I'm like, so when you said that, when did you think, you know what I need? <laughs> like, I want a fucking lollipop. So shout out Jamil, but <laughs> he had crazy. low, he had low blood sugar. Yeah, he's like, just like he got woozy, the... <laughs> mid robbery, like as wild. But yeah, bro, like Boston was Boston was Boston, dog. Like South I just, Boston, Dorchester, like yeah. That was I crazy. find that crazy to hear because 
Jersey, I would expect it. Like I've heard stir, you know, stories of Jersey, like, yo, you can't stop at a stop sign or a stoplight. They'll take your wheels, they'll take your car. But Boston is, I don't know why, but I feel like Boston, I see a bunch of white joggers sipping tea. Bro. And I don't know why. It's because that's what everyone thinks. People think like there's white there's black people in Boston? I've got that question multiple times. I'm feeling bro. it. Like, but here's the thing. You gotta you gotta remember South Boston was if you ever watched the movie Blue Hill Avenue, right? Blue Hill Avenue is a um oh drug movie. Blue Hill Avenue was I think it came out before was New Jack City, but in Boston, right? It mm. took place right where I grew up in Burke High School. So that you gotta think New Edition, like all that shit that they were talking Bobby Brown, all that shit, like that's all Boston. That whole culture is Boston like it? It South Boston. Nigga, that shit is, it, it is something. I gotta do my research. That's all. That's all it is. That's all it I, is. Because me and Shout my homie, yeah, all. <laughs> like because me and my homie, he's from New York, mm-hmm. and we had this argument months ago. And I was like, man, Virginia's bigger than New York. Virginia's bigger than <laughs> New York. He was like, no, it's not. You know, and put it on TikTok, and people were like, yo, you're an idiot. Like, cause I'm looking at the map mm-hmm. of Virginia. I'm like, okay, I see the sides of Virginia, mm-hmm. and I'm looking at New York, mm-hmm. but no. Like New York is like uh, like four hundred square feet bigger or some shit like that. It's mm. a small number, but still it bigger. Is bigger, yeah. But if you think about it, I'm just like, oh and man. Anything of people per capita. Mm. There's a fuck ton more people in New York than G. I mean, there's hella land out here, but yeah, there's more people there. And like Boston and New York are like rivals mm. in more ways than one. So even if you just think for you to even be on that scale. You got to be doing something, you know, similar. So people, mm. even when I talk, sometimes sometimes people think I'm from New York because they don't know. About Boston, or they hear Boston, they park the car, and rah, rah, you know, whatever the fuck. But it's like that's one side of Boston, and then there's like I said, South Boston, where it's a little different. It, and again, it's different now, but it's hella culture, bro. There's like this, there's Caribbeans all up and down, Haitians, Africans, Creole people, Cape Verde. Shout out to all of them. Like it's a lot of everything. I will say that because uh, I had like work in Connecticut. Slash Rhode you Island. No CT, it's the same shit. Okay, yeah. So I was up there and I was very surprised. Now, do they know how to make sweet tea? Fuck no. But, <laughs> but and h- Southern hospitality it doesn't. It's not up there. But mm. there were a lot of cultured people. Like you had Caucasian, you had Hispanic, you had Black, and I was surprised. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying, and that just shows how small my brain was at the time. Because I'm just like, oh wow, I thought this was majority. White folks. This is the South, man. The South, we just getting internet down here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cool. Like, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, like, yeah. It's cool. You, you know, know what I'm saying? But I, one thing I also noticed, because DJ, I always wanted to be a DJ, y'all, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. And I'm looking at you, bro. I don't. I know y'all already seen him in person, or y'all seen him in the club. You a big dude. You, 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 you was a big dude. Mm-hmm. So... It was no football, no basketball dreams. Of course, nigga, I balled up. It was no dreams, but I, I played ball for sure. I was always a team player. High school, I played varsity all four years. I got my, my letter and all that shit. Like, yeah, I started. I played JV and varsity. Then varsity. Yeah, bro, like, I was balling, but that was just for something to do. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? It's just period. That was just something to do. Like, you, you, when you outside, there's only but so much shit you can do. And then, so this would take me into Jersey time period. Um... It wasn't shit really to do, man. Like, it was house parties on the weekend, two dollar parties, dollar party, whatever, on the weekend. Girls. That's it. Like, we ain't even had no bread. Oh, you balling? We wake up in the morning. You balling? Like, that was it. Man, that was that it was, was straight good. to the point, basically. Yeah, that's it, bro. You either you balling <laughs> or you selling dope, or you just trying to figure some shit out in the middle. Like, you know what I mean? And we was just we being. Whoever my guys was at the time, every year it was kind of like it changed up because people just kind of got led astray with shit. Like all of my high school friends are either dead or in jail, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And then like one or two, one got stabbed not too long ago. The other one like ran away from the law in Florida. Like bro, I'm like I'm an anomaly. Like, and I got another two set of high school friends, actually brothers, who tried to set me up to kill me, which is excuse me, which is another crazy thing. Like bro, like my life has been something, something. And I didn't even find out. To his sister, they sister called me crying. I had lived in Philly at the time. This is after I left um, the army. I moved to Philly, and I was up and down the streets, bro, just figuring that shit out. Like, you know what I mean? I'm in the club. Shout out DJ Crazy, that's my guy. We just doing shit. Diamond cuts, what's up? Like, we we doing shit, and it gets to the point where them nigga, I'm like, yo, y'all come with me. Like, yo, we could do this together. The same type of energy I was giving you and everybody. 
they wasn't hearing it, bro. Like, they just eventually just got upset that I existed and was ready to get me the fuck up out of here. And it's just like, I heard the way their house was built, like, their room was on top of her room. So she could hear through the vent and all some shit. And they was like, yeah, apply him, bro. And I was like, all right, cool, cool. Because they, they they knew the house that I stayed at because, like, they helped me get it type shit. Mm-hmm. So they had the key. Like, again, we was, it was whatever. Yeah. Envy. Bro. Yeah. Envy bro. is a crazy thing. That's a story. Like, betrayal don't come from strangers, dog. Like, that's the biggest shit. Like, that's a that clip right there. Bro. Yeah, let that <laughs> marinate. Clip it. Yeah. Like, wow. Um... Boy, this is easy. Usually, I gotta pull questions out of. No, nah, but I, this is this is day. this is easy. This is oh, this is gravy. So, coming from Boston, which is crazy, mm-hmm. uh, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't even know Boston was like that. Uh, shit, like upstate, y'all got it. Mm-hmm. Um, when did you? So, you, when you came to Virginia, did mm-hmm. you come strictly to what Norfolk, seven five seven Richmond? So when I moved to Virginia. I was getting out of a, a publishing deal situation. So I was in North Jersey. So I blink with it. <laughs> I told you, bro, I was up and down. Okay, so boom. Let's go back. We're going to get back there. We're going to go back. Yeah. So I moved to Philly. I'm up and down. I link with an artist. So I'm like, yo, your shit's dope. It would be better if I was helping you. We get together. It's making sense. We catch the eyes of a publishing label, of A&R. They bring us to the label. Now we're there, right? But so technically, we're homeless, like, I'm sleeping on the couch at the label. He's sleeping in the other room, blow up mattress. I'm writing this, some of his shit. We work. As a matter of fact, them days, we was I was writing to Benny X beats before he was Benny. Like, mm. the Benny. That That's nigga, he was crazy. a little, like, African-looking nigga, like, coming to the studio, dropping off beats. And we was like, yo, let's just try to get him a hit type shit. Wrote a cup. I, if I had my, lap, my laptop's in the car. But anyway, um, shout out Benny, first of all. Congrats on your success, Brody. But... Um, yeah, so it just got to the point where now I'm working at this label, right? So I'm ghostwriting. I'm writing for artists, fucking Bruno Mars, Wiz Khalifa, uh, Nelly, uh, fucking uh, Ty Dolla Sign. Um, matter of fact, them days, Kevin Gates was still in jail. Kevin Gates, Salento, even though I didn't want to. Um, this, that, and then whatever artists that were just coming through there as well, we would just kind of get writing sessions going sometime. I would, like, engineer some of the sessions or help with the engineering type shit like that. So anyway, um we go through that. We're doing shows. Now we're doing uh, 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 Ski Master Slump God. We're opening up for Juice World. We got Rest Dead, right? Um, we with Uzi at Milk Studios. We Bro, up and down. We in Manhattan. I got locked up that night. We did a video shoot, man. <laughs> Crazy. So it got to the point where I was like, yo, why is every why are we doing all this shit? And I'm not getting no paperwork. Like, I'm trying to get signed. Like, I'm going to make this shit official. Again, because I'm thinking team, collective, that's just my mindset. And I'm not thinking i'm thinking business but i'm just not thinking that they're on that type time with it so um anyway the paperwork gets put down and i read it and i'm like nah there's no fucking way so i I sat it down i let it marinate for like a day excuse me i come back to it because i had some other sessions going on and then read the paperwork and it pretty much was bullshit it was a terrible deal it was like if i signed them if i signed to them immediately i'm fifty thousand dollars in debt my first like three three songs i keep writing my lip um, three songs I have to recoup that fifty thousand. So if I don't within those three sales, again I'm in debt. Plus studio time, plus, like just mad shit that just started accumulating that I had to um you know give them back. And I'm just like how the fuck? And then I owed them fifty masters. And this is in any form. So this was like voice recording. This is a reference track. This is like songs that were mine. Like just mad debt. So basically you had a slave deal. Bro, it was terrible. It was terrible, terrible. And it. And I go to the girl, I almost said her name. I will go to the woman and I'm like, yo, what the fuck is this? Like, it's like, oh, that's just standard. And mind you, she was in a, a meeting with some other people. And I'm like, so y'all are just standardly fucking people over. And everybody was like, who the fuck is this guy? And that was the beginning and the end of that, right? So now they're like, yo, we gotta get sober out here. Even though I'm the guy, like, I'm the sauce. It, it, it sounds big headed and excuse the fro, but it, it in that situation, I was the guy. And since me, it, it's been fucking tanked, which further confirms that I was a guy. But anyway, um, I was like, all right, fuck it then. So I left, and they started doing shit like behind my back, like just doing things like, oh, we don't need sober. We don't need. So I was like, all right, fuck this. I, my family's from Suffolk. My mom's side of the family's from Suffolk. So I was like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to move to Virginia, and I'm going to just start over. I came here like two, going on three years now ago with 
nothing. On my mom's couch, no car, no chain, no nothing. And we're going to get to that, ladies and gentlemen, because, yeah, he did not have this when I met him. Bro, I had nothing <laughs> when I got here. And within, with really, this last year don't count. So within the first two years is you seeing me doing shit. Like, oh, yeah, I got all. I'm going to take this shit over. Because I'm like, bro, you can't put me somewhere where there's a beach, the country, suburbs, project. You have everything within a 20-minute drive of each other and just... Space and opportunity? Are you not going to hear me? It's crazy. I said it, ladies and gentlemen. Virginia is a gold mine. Everybody didn't believe me. Ha ha. Yeah. I said it. Hell I yeah. said it. I've been like, saying it for a while. Everybody has this, this, like, this savior complex of like, yo, who's going to be the next to put us on the back? It's like, you don't have to do that shit. Like, you, you can, can do just it yourself. make moves. You can do it yourself. You I, see what I'm saying? Like, If you just take that mindset out and just like, yo, I'm going to just do my own thing. You're going to, your you're, you're show. Like, People will notice you, especially if you're good at it. Oh, yeah, they're going to see you, bro. Like, I'm proof. I only talk from personal experiences. I'm proof. They'll see you. I, I, I put this on everything I love. Uh, we went to we went to y'all's event. Uh, we went to Buco's, I think, once. I'll be there this Friday. And no. then I went to, uh, what was that? What was that thing called, man? And I feel so bad. It was at... It was at Prime Records. What was it called? The Puffin Mike. Puffin Mike, yeah. Shout three out to Yeah, three events that I've never had to search for a guest ever again. Mm -hmm. And it worked from there. So, yeah, you are right. It works for itself. But what is ironic and crazy to me is that you literally were... You got a plethora of people that you were actually doing things for, one for one. Man, and then, if and, you could put that shit on a t-shirt, bro. And then Sheesh. to throw it all away, like to put it behind you, like, hey, look, that was just one chapter of my life or two or three and boom. But then I'm trying what I'm trying to do is connect everything together because, OK, I got Boston. Mm -hmm. I got the, you know, being a DJ and having your first gig by the guidance Carolina, council. But yeah, North Carolina, bro. North so, OK, where was North Carolina in this? So North Carolina was before Philly, after Jersey. So North Carolina was Army days. So when I was there, I was working with a group called Weirdo, right? We In the Army. While I was in the Army, bro, I, my life was Grand Theft Auto in the Army. So just let that marinate without indicting myself. I was living Grand Theft Auto because I'm 19. I'm fresh out the house. I got money now. I was not feeling living with my parents, with my mom and her boyfriend at the time. I'm wildin'. I'm from Boston, okay? Fast and the Furious was like my shit. Grand Theft Auto was my shit. So my cars was crazy, right? At, bro, I was wildin'. Like, so you got a get rich, die trying type Nigga, thing. I was with whatever. I was on whatever. I got the pictures and t-shirts to prove it. Which, I wish the military would tell people that. Because, like, when you do leave the house, because I was in the Navy, so mm -hmm. I understand exactly where your head was. But mm -hmm. y'all's was a lot better. Crazy. We might have been stuck on the boat, but y'all had guns, pistols, Nigga. bazookas, and all this grenades. I'm jumping out of plane. I was airborne. I was wilding, bro. Like I would do shows. It would be like this. Okay, so boom. So weirdo, we were making. We were ahead of our time, dog. Like, and I'm, I'm gonna fuck you up when I tell you who was with weirdo with me, bro. Like, it was three of us. Me, Wasif Allah, who was on my song "Late for My Funeral," the first guy, and Cash. If you don't know who Cash is, you might have heard him. Cash. Now. I hate that I even said his name, but whatever. We're talking about me. We did a couple songs together. We did Mad Show. We opened up for Danny Brown. We up and down to, up and down Charlotte. Like, we just doing shit. De Niro Farrar, shout out to him. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yo. We, we doing <laughs> shit, bro. We, got, we end up signing a deal to Cream Collective, which is a UK label. So that was a thing back in the day. It didn't go anywhere because it was just, like, weird. But it happened. Like, that was a part of the shit. And, um... It just got to the point of like, okay, boom, let's come up with a plan, bro. Everything was bro, right? I'm feeding these niggas, staying in my crib, like, whatever. Wasif was like 16 at the time. Crazy rapper, but he was 16. I'm like, okay, you're going to graduate high school. I'm going to get out the Army. Cash, you go to Cali and get shit started, and we just going to come over there. But take everything we're building here, go over there, so they'll fuck with We know if we go to California, we're, we're out of here. Cash takes everything and says, fuck us, and pretty much sells us out, right? So he blows up. Now, you ever heard of the Shrek raves? Mm -hmm. That's cash. 
that's the shit we used to talk about. Ho. The shit, the, if y'all, if anybody's Googling it, look at the, uh, the camera's backwards, so whatever. <laughs> Anybody in here, Google the Shrek raves. The nigga that you see, the big fat nigga with the, the gap and all that, that's my guy that we used to write and work together with. And that's like another example of people like they take from me and they like, you know what I mean? They kind of like try to fuck me over. It's, it's in this, I got too many examples of that in this industry to where it'll lead you to the point where you're just like, man, fuck it. I'm going to just do it myself. And that's what it'll be get me going to Philly. That's what it'll be get the publishing label. That's what it'll be get. Matter of fact, while I was in there 2017, 18, I went to South by Southwest. Nigga, I DJed a Diddy party. Didn't even, that was before it was a thing. Oh shit. That was before it was a thing. <laughs> no. no <I'm, laughs> Not a Diddy party. <laughs> bro, shout out Austin. First of all, shout Yo. out Austin, Texas. Listen, we get there. Okay, it's early. We're doing, we're on a strip. I'm diving up Trinidad Jane. We with Wu-Tang. Shout out, um, Jared, uh, what the fuck is his name? Jarrell, um, Harrell, Harrell. I can't, fuck, something Jay Harrell. He was old producer from Bad Boy, like, way back in the day. His name, I'm, I'm fucked for forgetting your name. I'm sorry, bro. Rest in peace. But anyway, um, we in the revolt stage with Wu-Tang's performing. We in VIP, like, the shit's fire. We up and down, we performing up and down and shit, and, we get in the van and we go places and we just trying to figure out what the fuck, where's all the motion? Where's what's going on? We out Texas. Like we, what's up? We drove. I drove most of that shit. Let's go get, we find it's like a houses in the hills, mansions in the hills. And we just start following the crowd. We get there. I sneak into the party. I get them in and it's just a big ass mansion. The lawn is huge. It might, it fit like, man, it might be like 2000 people outside bro. Easy. I go inside the joint. Who you see in there? Pissy, drunk, falling. Well, I'll say drunk, but I don't know what he was off. Boom gang, wildin'. Boom gang, he wildin'. Chanel West Coast over there. She's kissing on some nigga, some light-skinned boy. You got Rhapsody. She's in the corner over there. Like, it's just, it's that. It's just star-studded. Everybody just in the mix. So I make my way upstairs. The DJ is on a balcony. So, like, look overlooking the, the, you know, the lawn. But it's in a room. Like, you got to go into a room, and then you can go out to the balcony. You know, it's one of them. We get out there for whatever reason. The DJ's fucking up. His laptop is fucking up, and I'm like, "Yo, I can spend. I, I got you." He's like, "Yo, you sure, bro?" I'm like, "Yeah, I got you." I get on. I'm like, "Yo, yo, come on, come on." I'm telling my artist, "Yo, come on." So I'm like, "Yo, what's, I didn't have no check, check, mic check that." And at that time, I was still DJ sober, which I had to change my name because there's a DJ sober already in Dallas. Shout out to him. But we kept getting tagged on the same shit, and he was getting pissed, and then legality. So I had to change the sober to DJ. But anyway. At that time, I was still DJ Sober. So I'm not even checked. I don't know what the fuck I said to introduce myself, but I know I told you motherfuckers I'm DJ Sober. I get on there. I start spinning. Shit's turning up. I'm like, yo, come on, come on. I'm about to say it now. Again, I'm not giving no clout. Yo, come on, artist. Let's go. He said, come on, artist. Hey, you <laughs> artist formerly known as. <laughs> he petty as and, uh, No, bro, I, I can't, bro. I can't. And um, hey, yo. so he comes on He comes on stage on, on, the, on the joint. We rock. We kill shit, and then the fucking, um, the DJ comes back, all right, bro, I got it, I got it. I'm like, oh, that's cool, so we leave, but we the man right now. Like, we, we doing that shit. We floating the building, like, it's fire, and then eventually, we leave. But then later on, I kind of find out, I left, like, like Denzel said, I left right before the devil got there. So, like, I find out that was a Diddy's party. Holy But I didn't know. Shit. I know when Diddy see this, he be like, mm-hmm. motherfucker, enough. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna get that boy there. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, bro. I, uh. But here's the thing. What's funny after that, um, I was in Cali at the time. I get a call from the label. They're like, Yo, sober, we need you back. And this is where I had to go to Manhattan for the first time. We need you. Uh, it's an emergency. We need you by like tomorrow night. Can you get back in town? I'm like, What's that? What we doing? Let's can't talk right now, but I need you to DJ in Manhattan. We'll fly you out. We'll get you tickets. Whatever, go claim tickets. I get back. I'm DJing for uh, Bridget Kelly's album release party. Bridget Kelly is um she's on like hip hop, love and hip hop. Yeah, I know Hollywood. what you're talking about. That's why I'm like okay, yeah. What? So I'm doing her album release party, right? It's in this nice ass building in Manhattan. All kind of shit. Now it's sponsored by Deleon Tequila. It's sponsored by Bose. It's some other shit. This is a couple joints. The guy that was running it, Barry Bonds, shout out to him. He was a manager, but he was under Bad Boy. And I didn't know that. Again, I just did. What's the name? Then I went to Cali. Then I was supposed to come, right? So I didn't know that. So we working. And now he's like, yo, I'm trying to manage you. Like, I think you you got what it takes. It's not a third. 
I'm like, okay, cool. Again, not knowing he's from Bad Boy. And at them days, P. Diddy wasn't what he is now, but in my mind, he's always been the devil. I used to have nightmares about P. Diddy, bro. That's on my mind. Like, <laughs> I'm trying I'm trying to take this shit. Without like actually doing so, nothing. I'm trying to take this shit so yeah, seriously, bro, but like, I can see you in the nightmare. He's just like, ah. Yo, nah, just... It was just like <laughs> it was a, it was just an energy thing. Like something always told me, yo, stay away from him. It was just a thing, bro. Like I, and again, no disrespect to him, you, or your team, because I've you've never done nothing to me. And you ain't warned nobody. And I'm yo, nothing, <laughs> I, haven't, I, haven't, you know, I haven't done nothing to nobody. They haven't done nothing to me. But I'm just telling you how it went. And then with Barry, once I found that out, maybe it was on me, I don't know, but the communication just got weird. And the last thing he tried to do for me was get me to spin at DJ Con, which was in New York. It's a big convention and, and all of this shit. And um, he was going to get me a sponsor. And for whatever reason, it just didn't happen. And I'm happy it didn't happen. But that, it, it just, you know what I mean? It just didn't happen. But anyway, so fast forward, I, got, I did all of that shit. And I was just like, you know what? The reason why it was okay for me to move to Virginia on purpose, um, one, because geographically it's a good location. Like, I can get to Atlanta if I need to and get to wherever. But it just was like, and we know it's a gold mine, right? I kind of, like, did quick research. Like, damn, I've been here before, but not really. But it was just like, it didn't matter where you put me, bro. Because in every situation that I'm in, if you hear the stories, like, I'm always my own thing. I wasn't, I was never, like, depending on somebody to do it. And that's why, like, Everybody who's fucked me over, except for Ka- well, Cash has seen me, so that that count has all reached back like, "Yo, bro, it's good to see you still doing it." Or they had a fucking hand out. Oh man, they done had their hands out. Producers, promoters, artists, niggas just around niggas that you thought was cool with you, like, bro, like me, me. I don't never quote nothing Meek Mill ever said, but when that motherfucker said, "Oh." His boy asked him for money. He said, oh, you changed now. He's like, no, nigga, you changed because you never used to ask me for money before. Now you're asking me for money and shit. Like, that's, I don't expect that from you. Is it specifically money or is it opportunity? Like, they see where you at and yes. they see your connection. Because I, I, I see that in two different two different realms. Because I've had that happen, not with just monetary value. But, oh, it's bread. hey, bro, can you do this, this, and this for me? And I'm just like, bro, it's, when I... They, they don't be on nothing, bro. So the leverage doesn't do anything. Like, yeah. It's, I can see if somebody's like, yo, you know so-and-so, can you plug me in? And if I see you doing something, of course, I, I'm I'm never going to gatekeep. Go ahead. Have at it. Like, I'll give you, I'm not giving nobody the number, no shit. But I said, yo, my man's trying, uh, uh, whatever. And I'm out the fucking picture. What y'all talk about is what y'all talk about. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm never gatekeep. And again, plenty of people can attest to this. I don't gatekeep. But these motherfuckers be asking me for money, nigga. Like, sending me cash app requests. Like, Bold, bro, bold, and I don't, I don't embarrass them to them. I don't embarrass them to their girls. I don't embarrass nobody on no type of time. I'm just speaking general, to where it's like, it's unfortunate that that's where it leads to, bro. But it be like that, dog. Like, it really be like that. See, I feel like being now getting this conversation out of you and the history is wild i'm still trying to i know the audience right now they're trying to wrap their their minds about what you just said but it seems to me like you're a very humble and helpful dude but i feel like even when you said they like bold with it i feel like you be petty though like you could get petty i never i never i put like this bro two things you never want to see what happens on the other side of what you're dealing with a man is when you publicly embarrass him or when he's desperate mm. stay away from them niggas they're gonna crash out they're gonna crash they're gonna fuck your whole shit up it don't matter they what got it nothing is. to lose they have nothing or they feel like they do at that in that moment embarrassing a man publicly and a man that's desperate a nigga that's either hungry or he's like yo man i really gotta pay this bill or i'm about to go to jail or whatever the case Stay away from them niggas, bro. So, said all that to say, I never publicly embarrass motherfuckers because, one, I've been down, bro. Like, I was sleeping on couches. I was a hobo sexual at one point. Like, I was fucking for somewhere to stay on some shit. Like, <laughs> hey, I yo. was that nigga, bro. Wait. I was him. Wait. <laughs> bro. I've never heard somebody use that shit on camera yet. Yo, that is funny. It was real. I, yo, I, <laughs> I made a... <laughs> real. 
I made a post on Facebook about that shit, but I didn't think nobody was ever gonna use it. Use a funny dude. That is Bro, crazy. That shit's real, dog. Like, <laughs> really, it's mutual. You know, everybody get what they want out of the deal. But realistically, I'm like, damn, bro, I need somebody to crash. Like, show you trying to talk to me. Might as well. Yeah, bro, I was down. Like, nigga, my ex-girlfriend at the time, shout out to her, used to bring me, like, groceries. Like, I was sleeping in a basement of a... Bro, it was like, okay. I was sleeping in the basement of a guy who was partners, who, who wanted to work with a guy that I was working with. Like, on some third party type shit. It was like... This is the guy we know. He's cool with him. I'm cool with him. And I end up crashing in his mom's basement. Like, yo, bro, can I just chill here for a minute? Yeah, sure. And then eventually they were like, yo, you can stay. I know you need somewhere to stay. And I was just living there until they was like, yo, nigga, you got to go. Like, you just existed in our basement. And I just didn't have nowhere to go. And then eventually Shorty kind of, it just lined up the way Shorty was able like, yo, you can just come stay with me. And we was together. And then that went, whatever, relationship, personal stuff, whatever. But, excuse me. Yeah, bro, I'm never too cool to for nothing. Like, yeah, I ride good now. I've been up before and all this other shit, and like, I'm I'm great now. Like, I'm I'll probably never see poverty again. But I know what that shit was like, bro. That's why I don't, I don't really too much joke on niggas who ain't got it. It's like, a it's a humbling experience because I I know how you feel. I've been had that broke lifestyle. Yeah. Get some money, feeling rich, feeling good. Trying to help others and stuff like that, lose it mm-hmm. and try to build it again. And I'm in my building backstage now, and it's really telling me like, okay, cool. The people that you were fucking with, really splurging on, didn't help you build it back up. And the will. people that didn't care if you had or didn't, they're still here. Mm-hmm. So I understand exactly what you're saying. I, me personally, when I was just listening to your story and stuff like that, I'm just like, bro, this dude, he's been doing a lot. He has a lot going on for himself, and. I don't know, man. I just made, I don't know. For some reason, I just had it in my heart. I was like, I could see him being like, nigga, what? $500? You want what? You know what I'm saying? I could go there. I've gone there. I've been the shooter. I've been the aggressor. I've done all that shit. But it's like, for what? Yeah. You up, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, when you get to a point, when you actually got some shit, it's really hard to, to, for somebody to get you out of that. Mm. Just because they ask him. You really, you're like, bro, come on, but just chill and just sidestep it. You don't even really give it too much time because you got shit to do. Like, you know you, what I mean? It, it, it don't be worth it, bro. Because you definitely have an essence towards yourself. I've been, I've been, and I, hold on, let me, let me wait before I get to that. I mean, wait. <laughs> I got to understand this. Before we go continue any further, because mm-hmm. there's backstories on backstories that that complete other stories. Yeah. Where the hell did sober the DJ come from? The name? Yes. Because I'm gonna tell you why. Because when you hit me up earlier and I looked at my phone, I was like, "Who the fuck is BH?" And I was like, "I don't know this name." Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, that's why I didn't pick up." Because I'm mm. just like, "I don't know who this is." Mm. But yeah, where where did sober the DJ come from? Cash. The same cat. So, wow. Back in the day, high school, I was DJ Life with a Y because I was a huge currency fan. Jet Life, right? So I was DJ Life. I thought you were gonna say Life Jennings, but Ooh, that's nutty. But I'm just saying. I, 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 I thought you were gonna say something like that. I was listening to Odd Future and like Lil B and Gucci Man. You gonna talk about fucking Life Jennings? I'm sorry. That's crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't edit it, so y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. I'm that's sorry. Crazy. Um. Yeah, no, so I was DJ Life, and then I knew, like, just growing up, or, like, you know, in life, I didn't want to be that. Like, that was just a high school thing, you know what I mean? I was doing the jerk and shit back in the day. Like, I was just that nigga. So, come time, it was like, yo, you need a DJ name. And I was like, fuck, I don't know, man. I used to be DJ Life. He thought I said knife. That's one. Then he was like, well, you don't do anything. You're always sober, so what would we call you, like, sober knife? And I was like, where the fuck did knife come from? Let's just do sober. He's like, all right, DJ sober. And it just, that was in my living room. That's right on Morganton and Fayetteville. Shout out Fayetteville. I fucking hate Fayetteville, but shout out Fayetteville. The chicken, the chicken city yeah, it's, of North Carolina. Man, it's, it smells like chicken like shit out Suffolk. there. It's Suffolk for North Carolina. Like, it's yeah, bad. bro, it's, it's bad out there. Yeah, it's, yeah. Again, shout out Fayetteville. I've learned a lot from Fayetteville. No beef with Fayetteville. You got but one good restaurant. It fucking sucks. It's one. Not, and that's arguable. But anyway. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, like yeah. So you know, I mean, that's I became DJ Sober, and then again, that's before we knew anything outside of what we were doing. So I didn't know that DJ Sober in Dallas uh, existed. So it looks nothing like me. He's a fucking short white guy with glasses. I think like we're just not the same. But um, yeah. And then like I said, as far as legality goes in time, I was like, okay, well, I'll just be sober to DJ because I wasn't gonna rearrange my like take my whole name away. Like that was nutty. So um, yeah, that bro, that's where it came from. Just not smoking or drinking. I was always, I was racing cars and shit, so I, I couldn't be drunk. I didn't trust niggas behind my wheel, and I wasn't using what I'm selling. In the military, you can't do that, so it just stuck. Okay, so that's what I was at. at okay, that's, now I feel bad. Because, okay, everybody knows I usually buy drinks, you uh-huh. know what I'm saying? Because I, no blunts, I usually tell them they can bring weed carts or vapes or, and I'll bring like liquor and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I stopped doing it because people lose themselves and then when they leave here i feel bad Mm. so i was like you know what this is a special occasion like i remember what i was drinking during your show (laughs) so i was going to bring the party favor back and then i was like you know probably he was like "Mm, nah you're good and i was just like does he not like patron i I was like is it me everybody (laughs) loves patron but yeah so now okay so that's where the sober dj sober Mm. comes from how was that that lifestyle because I, again military mm-hmm. i was Shit i wouldn't say hard. i was a weed head but i was like i smoked weed more than i did alcohol but then when i got in the navy it was just like drink to the phone so you had to you know what i'm saying yeah. so how'd you avoid all of that like because i see i've seen your page and you really be on a, a healthy lifestyle like mm-hmm. encouraging people to go to the gym eating right and stuff like that obviously you see the gut I'm a sip. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but hey, hey teach us on. But where did that, that motivation come from? Um I man, I honestly, bro, I couldn't even give you a pinpoint because it's a bunch of different shit. Like, but I guess ultimately it's like, yo, I don't like not being in my frame of mind. Like I'm never lacking. Like this is not I don't like the whole not knowing what the fuck is going on around me, man. And plus I people depend on me like it's and i've always thought like that even when nobody was i think people are dependent especially now oh shit if i just stop so you know what fuck this i'm going to cambodia drink some breast milk whatever right just breast milk is wild it is, out of all <laughs> out of everything out of you don't even fucking know the skin <laughs> y'all know the skin cambodian breast milk y'all know it's out of days of um anyway, <laughs> Yeah, you gotta you gotta get there, bro. You gotta get there. Like, I'm gonna send you the link. Don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> Yo, hey, I was not expecting that. that like cactus, cactus water or nah, coconut nah, milk. Nah, it's just we straight from the neck to the teeth. Let's go. Oh shit! But um, nah, like it, it, it's uh, I can't even remember what the fuck I was saying now. <laughs> oh yeah, and, like if I was to just stop. Mm-hmm. A lot of people will be affected, right? And that's like motivation-wise. That's like seeing somebody you look up to just say, fuck it, I'm done. That'll do something to your morale, right? They'd be like, damn, like, what, you the only reason I was doing this shit. Nah, you ain't doing it. Like, if somebody saw me spark a blunt, like, the world would fucking catch on fire. Like, what the fuck you mean you getting high now? You know what I mean? So it's like, whether it's directly we're talking about it or not, you wouldn't believe how much people come to me like, yo, man gotta stop smoking bro like i want to be like you bro like yeah that's good bro you really be doing that shit and it's like yeah so you almost have a responsibility that's it that's the thing as an entertainer like that's you you have a responsibility to the people to your watchers to your to anybody whoever your co your what do you call it? Uh, colleagues whatever the fuck like whoever's around you who sees you and affected by your work when i press play and i'm check check my check and the crowd's like oh shit who's this guy you owe them like, this is a public service. Like, I don't exist unless, unless people like me, unless they like what I'm giving them, right? So I've created this brand. I've created this package. I've created this lifestyle. And that's what it is. You can't stray from that. Like, once you stray from that, you get, you fuck up. You fuck, you lose track of what's going on, what's up, down, whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? You just fuck up. So it's just, it's really easy to just stay true to myself if I'm just doing that. You don't get lost in the game. It's all—it's real easy to get lost in this game when you're trying to do some other shit. But if you just being who you've been, this is what's been working for me, you can't lose, bro. And then on top of that, I've seen so many people fucked off on drugs, bro. Like, again, I, you know, I sold them. 
I know what the fuck I do to people. All I can do is offer. You want it here, but past that, like, man, it's I'm just, again. I'm not gonna say anybody's names, but like, there's been celebrities, artists. Yo, you want a line, bro? You good? You you offer me drug like right off the rip, bro. Like we'll be at college. I did a college tour. Like we put one together. I finessed the fuck out of a campus out in Kutztown. Shout out Kutztown. Woo, good time, Pennsylvania. They sitting here like, yeah, uh huh. Go ahead, continue. Like we 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 did a tour where we we went to the college and we pretty much partnered up with a, um an organization. They had like tiers, gold. They gave them X amount of money, bronze, silver, whatever. Each tier in the thing, depending on how much work you've done in college, the college allots your organization this much money. So the one we were with were the gold tier. So they had a fuck ton of money. So we pretty much finessed the college to give us twenty thousand dollars to provide a student concert. With a live DJ, live artist, and some other shit. DJ, artist I was with, they gave us the bag. That was it. We just do around some names. Like, hey, we work with Sony TV. We work with this. We work with this place. And at the time, we were. So it's not like an infringement. I should, probably shouldn't even said that. But um, it was just one of those things where, like, I just finessed it. I finessed it. Call it. And we was on college tours. And even then... You in college in PA? Cookstown, Pennsylvania? Y'all ever looked that shit up? It's out past Amish country. Like, it's nothing there. Mm. But drugs and sex and white girls. And you just kind of just get in the mix of that. So, me knowing them, Kobe Bryant, a whole bunch of other black men that's been charged with rape, messing around, this, that, and the third. This, that, and the third, and that, and the third. I'm good. Stay I'm going to turn away shit up. from the soaps. Man, no listen. Stay away. The end. But um, I'm going to do my thing, and I'm going to get the fuck up out of here. I'm not going to depend on these people to have my back, bro. I know they don't give a fuck about me. No matter how much, oh, my God, I fucking love you. Yo, you're crazy. Yo, you're the, all that shit. That's cool because that's the game. We have fun. It was dope. I gave you that. That's that's what I'm bottling up and selling. But past that, get the fuck out of here. I'm going to go sleep in the back seat in this van. Y'all crash here. We, bro, we used to, I was just talking about this shit. We used to do shows. This is back Cash Weirdo Days with, with, with Rondre. Excuse me, YC. We would do shows like in Charlotte, Wilmington, North Carolina, all type of shit, and just find chicks that like was fucking with us and go back to their their cribs and crash, bro. Like that that's how we ended the nights. Like it was like, damn, they got a job, we gotta find somewhere to sleep tonight. We ain't got no money for the hotel. They be upstairs fucking all white girls. I'm in the wheel, chilling. Or I'll go get a hotel if I had a couple of dollars and maybe it was payday or some shit. And I'll go to the wheel. But or go yeah, go to a hotel. But past that, that was what we was doing, bro. And again, just drugs was just in that mix, and I'm like, I'm good. It just, oh, man, I, I got shit to do, bro. Especially now. I understand. There's two things. I'm gonna save the last. I'm gonna save the next one for last. But I always ask artists. I say, hey, yo, when it happens, and you hit that 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 plateau of people loving you, like you said, mm. and it's ironic that you said the right answer. If only one. It's only been one other person, which was uh, Breadwinner Kane. He was, and I asked him. I said, man. No, it's Brad Winter Kane and Saucewood winning. Both of them sat on the couch and was like, look, I ain't worried about the females. I ain't worried about they can do what they want to do. I, if anything, I'm going to go work out. I think Brad Winter Kane was like, I'm going to go work out. Saucewood winning was like, I don't even like drinking. I don't like doing that. Mm-hmm. Because I would say for myself, it's hard not to be a, a womanizer. So to have this, that, and the third and calling, I've had it. And it is hard, but I, I admire people like y'all mm. that can be like, yeah, I can set that shit to the side and it's about the bread. It's about my, my well-being. I got shit to do in the morning. I'm going to move forward. Mm. I got I love it for y'all. My second thing is, you said you were Jamaican. Mm. Yeah, and I don't want to sound racist. I'm not trying to sound racist. You know, I, I'm stereotyping. Mm. It's big in the culture. Sure. And you just avoided that? Yeah. I mean, how much shit is big? You really are. Black? You are really like the anomaly black sheep. Like, there's a lot, bro. There's a lot of shit that people do that I just, you just like, I'm good. Like, period, bro. I, again, like, it's, and it's, I'm not going to say, yo, you wouldn't understand. I know stupid shit like that, but like, think of it like this. When you're doing shit for other people, to benefit other people. And you're, if you look at like life and like this hierarchy of like, who's at the top and you know, all the way down to the worker bees at the bottom of the pyramid, right? 
the nigga that's at the top has a responsibility. Now, does he do it right or not? Probably not. You know what I mean? Whatever. But you got a responsibility. And I, bro, I'm telling you, I got too many people counting on me. Like, and I see all of this shit on a bigger scale, larger scale. So like, even when I'm DJing, I know DJing is not going to be my thing. Even though I'm great at it. That's not the thing. The thing is what you, how do you affect the people? Gotcha. Like, I'll give you an example. I got a young boy, came from Boston. He goes to NSU now. I meet him up. I'm like, yo, what's up, bro? You in town? That's good. Young, 18, you know, freshman. Not, well, this year he'll be a sophomore. I said, yo, what do you want to be? Like, what do you want to do? Oh, I'm doing computer engineering. Uh, I'm like, no, fuck all that. I'm talking about, like, what do you like? What is what is the thing you like? He said, well, I, mean, I like I like photography. I like cameras. I'm like, you know how to take pictures? You, you, you dope like that? I mean, I never heard that my own camera, but I like it. I said, all right, bet. Look, come with me to this event. It was like, let's say that was a Wednesday, like that Friday I was booked somewhere. I said, come with me. You're going to take some pictures, and we'll go from there. Okay, cool. All right. We go, take pictures. They were ass. The lighting was terrible, but he did that shit. Showed up. He fucking, he shot him. He was active. He was trying. I'm like, okay, bet. I got a fucking 2000, well, it wasn't 2000, the camera itself was like 800 something, but I have a camera that's worth a lot of money, and I bought a bunch of attachments to it, that's just sitting there. Hey, you know what to do with this? Oh, shit, that's the, mm, 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 mm. okay, yeah, make it happen. For real? I said, yeah, bro, just don't break it. That is what the fucking, that's what it's for. Could you imagine, like, you see where I'm at now. Imagine if a motherfucker was like, oh, you like DJing? Well, here's an opportunity. Here's a, like, bro, I had to kick down too many doors. I know what that shit feels like, bro. It fucking sucks. So being that nigga, I could say, yo, young boy who's actually trying, huh? I love it. Oh, this is wild. I be having these moments on the show, not to cut you off, but you said it and the story went perfect. I literally just posted it. Y'all check it out. Just put it on my page. I had uh, Ezekiel's Will, uh, Sean, Mr. Sean Stewart, owner of Ezekiel's Will, and I had uh, the rap god, D'Angelo Xavier. And D'Angelo was like, opportunities create opportunities. Mm-hmm. And it just connected. I it, it's, I it's weird when you hear people on the same path. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like that was the whole purpose of the No Limit podcast is to network and have people network mm-hmm. like you know what i'm saying for instance i know you can't see it right now but like i said we have dj young tay in the building we have dj so i mean sober the dj in the building uh, yeah. two djs you know what i'm saying now would they have probably communicated or known each other or seen each other in the future probably but now they're face to face they see each other now whether they Pass up info and shit like that. That's on them. But it happened here. And that was the whole purpose. But I like how you said that. Mm -hmm. Like, you were just like, yo, you're giving people opportunities to be something. Especially because some people, they don't, they look at the the whole thing, Mm -hmm. but they don't look at the the real purpose. Like, the foundation, what they really want to do. I want to go to college. I don't don't blame people. Like, a lot of people, for whatever reason, they don't take me serious. Because they don't, I'm not readable. I've been told that plenty of times. Like, you can't look at me and say, oh, he's like this. I've been told, like, oh, I thought you was a this nigga. Oh, bro, you don't smoke? Damn, you never, like, I did. Like I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. It's okay. Like, it just, that's just what we do as people, whatever. But all in all, empathy makes it to where I know that you don't get me. You don't understand. So it's like, don't worry about it. It's all right. You know, pattern, man. Come on, I'll show you. Come on, let me show you something. But because again, I didn't get that, and I'm just I study psychology like shit, so I know just how that works, and that's why I do it, bro. Like that's why I do it. It's not just about the fame, which comes. It's it's there. I've been there. I just came back from Houston early this year with Travis Scott and all of that. I just did the nigga. I was there. I've been there multiple times. Like I've hit those peaks that people like dream about. I've been there. I've so you like it. you like creating earthquakes and shit. Sure, that's what you like doing. Sure, whatever that means. Sure, you know what it means. But whatever, it means, <laughs> I'll, I'll say it like this: like it's it's like it's cool that I'm getting my opportunities, but to me, I'm not, and that's a whole nother whatever the fuck. But do you feel like you're cursed? 
Nah, I wouldn't say I'm cursed. Because me patching the information that I got right now and putting it all together, it it seems that the the cloudy storm has been over your head mm. a little bit because you have the potential, you have the talent, you have the personality to be great. And not saying that you're not great right now, but I'm just saying, could I imagine Public being, perception. you know what I'm saying? Could I be around the people that you've been around right now? Fuck no. Could I go to a Diddy party? Would I want to go? No, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's the opportunity that you've had. And I'm sitting over here like, Yo, you've done a lot. You've been around a lot. And, but as soon as you about to hit, like, it's like a roller coaster and you about to hit that peak. It's like the roller coaster stops and it goes back down. You starting mm-hmm. over. That's why I said, does it feel like a curse? I can't, empathy towards the situation speaking. I'll say, I, I don't want to, I don't want to give a cop out and say it's a curse because mm-hmm. that's a cop out. You know what I mean? Like, sure. I could say that. Right, if if my brain was just on that type of time, like yo, I feel like I'm fucking cursed, bro. And then, but then now you, you're giving yourself an excuse not to work. You mm. give yourself an excuse not to like try to find another way, find another. You know what I mean? There's no one way. Like every day I wake up and I figure this shit out. There's no manager. There's no guidance. There's nothing I can re- result to to say, yo, these are the steps to becoming that. None of that shit. You just got to figure it out, right? So I don't even practice DJing anymore. I don't fucking touch unless I'm playing. I don't touch my turntable will be tucked in the trunk or in my storage unit. I don't touch it. It's cause that again, that's the easy part. I'm not worried about that anymore. I gotta figure out the structure of it, the team, like you notice by myself. You would think <laughs> Oh shit. I knew it was gonna come because I was gonna ask, but Nigga, you already bringing it here. I'm by myself. Okay. Bro. Thank you. Thank there's you. no there's no every dollar, every move past my pops, like he's helped me out with onesies and twosies is because he's my father, right? Of course, something. But the shit you see, me. Stop and think. Me. So now you think from 2000, call it to say 14, 10 years, excuse me, 10 years, which brings me here, me. So now imagine, I and, and you have your perception of me. So let's just say whatever that is. Imagine you have you see other people who are who, who you would perceive as less than me as far as just in the realm of like talent and shit, who got a whole team, cameraman, entourage, bus, truck, uh, a limo service ready, and you're just like, what the fuck? So I got to sit back and watch that shit, and I'm like, bro, what the fuck? But again, so even me just not having a team lets me know I feel like it's just more work I got to do, because if I had a team, naturally you would be further on. Like, it's just, that's just automatic. But you would, but you would think it. And I'm glad you said it on camera. Now I have it on camera. I think everybody thinks the same thing. Because even, team, rest in peace d bro, because we thought about this shit. We thought about this shit when he was here. And we was like, he, he already got shit going on. Himself. He already dealing with this person, this person. Because when this idea that I'm doing right now, mm-hmm. like, I'm, I'm a big Marvel head and DC comic books. I'm assembling my affinity stones. I'm getting mm. my gothic, right? Nice. And certain certain stones, I'm just like, yeah, that that's not going to work because that's already on somebody else's, you know what I'm saying? Mm. It's already their own thing. From me looking out and just watching, like, okay, damn, he, he hosts some gigs. He's doing parties. He's doing events. Okay, he got some team members with him. He, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you would think that because yeah. that's what I'm seeing. Like a lot of people... DJ, Young Tay, you said it. Oh, I seen y'all, y'all, y'all. I've been by myself for the last like three months, mm-hmm. with three, four months. So when people say y'all, I don't get offended. It's just like people think it's multiple people in this project, but it's literally me from this busted Android phone. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Handling everything. Mm-hmm. So, but that's how perception works. I thought that you had everything laid out. I do in my mind, like even down to. And you got two phones like Kevin Gates. You notice this, that? This, this, <laughs> stupid. Even down to this. Look at this. Well, yeah. That whole logo, this whole shit. Hold on. I'm putting this whole shit together. Don't say what it is. This is a test run. 
But even down to all of that, I'm doing this shit every day, bro. Solo. All of this. Let me help you with that logo. So then, it's done. <laughs> that even down to look at look at um, dance all versus twerk, right? The event I just did and uh, what's the name after the carnival. I had Big Will, I had DJ A Nels, I had DJ Crazy Swagger, I had um, photography. Oh, fuck. Best experience, uh, Super K. Just call it Super Super K because it, it was super super. Photography experience that it's like a really long name I can never remember. But shout out Super K. I had Wayne. I had Alyssa. I had uh, Nicole Black came to her birthday. I had uh, Hookah Tease by um sorry Hooked on Tease Hookah. All of that shit put together and it was all what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? And I just put it all together. There's no team, bro. It's just like I have an idea. You make the my music. I do all that shit. I don't produce all my beats, but some of the ones that that like I have my hand on, it's executive production. So I'll say, hey, do this, do do that, do do. Okay, now add that. Do I'm just not physically doing it because I don't want to. Like you're a producer, you fucking do it, you know. But nigga, it'd be me, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like a lot of the shit that I've been doing for all of this time, that's why I don't trip when it don't work my way or my favor because I can always do it again. It's always been me, like. I don't even. I'm not even naming names of artists that I'm like. I don't say personally responsible for right now, but like out here that have a a strong career because of me, nigga. Solo, solo, no team. I wish I had a fucking photographer. That'd be there, great. There's a couple. I, well, we'll we'll talk about that afterwards. But uh, right. there's there's a couple that I actually am gonna ask you about. Talk to me. Uh. Cause one, you were on the Oculus, and you had my girl on there, and you know, saying fire. She should have been shot the fuck up by now, but I understand why. But yeah, she should have already been there. The best. I, I came up with you. Send it, we spin it. Calvin, you broke your neck. You didn't know that, nigga. You send it, we spin it. I got a tattoos. Listen, anti world. I did. Hey, look. Um, you knew here, right? You figuring it out? Hmm? You figuring it out? No, because I had. Now we'll talk we'll about afterwards. We'll, yeah, we'll talk about there. afterwards. So look, <laughs> camera got to be off. I got anti world tattooed on me, right? Mm-hmm. Anti world was a radio station I made 2014-15. Anti world radio, where I would DJ, and then I would have people send me their music, and I would just DJ. It wasn't live. It wasn't like to the T of you send it, but. It was a portion of it, and I would mix their songs with mainstream radio, and I ended up getting cease and desist letters because it actually started growing, right? So then, yeah, crazy, because I was playing their music without the license to play it. Oh, okay, I got you, I got you. So, um, that. So then fast forward, um, we get to you send it, and I'm like, Q, you need a personality, bro. That's my guy. He was one of the guys. Like, Q had Ooh Sticky, you know, and a lot of things they were doing we would talk about before we even hit the airway. So, like, I would sit down and watch them do it, but we already, you know, chopped, yo, so what you think about this? You know, we that's my boy. So, I'm helping him build his thing. And I was like, yo, what you think about this? And we were at, like, some girl's house at the time when we first shot it, and it worked. I'm just like, yo, listen, I just got to give you, like, a catchphrase or something, and we can, like, but because I, I got check, check, mic check all the time already. He didn't have nothing. So, I'm like, yo, why don't you just, like, what it do with your boy Q? All right, fuck it. And we just Mario Luigi that shit, and it just worked, right? Mm-hmm. So it while definitely we, did. It worked, bro. While we're doing that, Calvin sends in a record, and it's down. That record never came out, and down ended up being like a remix of a record that Alexa already had out. And I heard the song, and I was like, I don't know who this artist is, but I need to find her because again, remember, I'm already from songwriter. I'm already on that type of time with any artist I hear that's like like that. I'm like, oh, what are they doing? So, find her. We don't talk. We never talk. I just keep seeing at on on Instagram when it's time. Man, we get um. They were doing like a wine tasting and they were filming like the commercials, and I finally saw her in person, and she's there. And I'm like, he's like, yo, you're not selling I was like, for real? That's what she look like. All right, nigga, bet. 
So I'm like, damn, how am I going to talk to her? Because there's a whole room full of women. It was all women, and they were not fucking with male energy. It, it was just one of them days, right? That's when the, I think that's when y'all was doing, like, the wine. The they wine tasting. Yeah, that's cute The wine tasting. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, hell no. I ain't so, going to those. Yeah, yeah that's, no. that's it. You know, that's his thing. And, they, they, you know, it works for them. But um, so I, I pull up to her. I was like, man, I'm mad at you. And I walked off. And she's like, what the fuck? So she follows me off, and we. I'm like, I'm sorry, I've been playing your music for weeks. Like, what's up? You ain't said nothing. You ain't said thank you. Nothing. Oh, I didn't know. So we meet from then on. Boom. That last album. Well, before the album, we went on tour together. We did the Mac Airs joint. Fire. We did like two days of rehearsal, of like just getting going over the orders. But I'm already me. She's already her. It it just it just works right, and I can. I'm, I've been in that stage, that part of stage where like you gotta make your shit fit the artist. You know what I mean? So it, it wasn't hard for me to do that with her, but we killed that shit, bro. Killed that shit. And then the next project, so far so gone. Um, so far so. She's gonna fuck me up. So far so great. I'm fucked up. Sorry. So far so great. Now you good? Cause she solidified. So I already know what time it is. Yeah, she's gonna fuck me up. I'm sorry, Alexa. It's so far so great. I listened to this album. It was my number one listen album when it dropped. Just so you know, like on my Apple Music joint. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. So far, so great. I had to get it out. Um, shout out to Drake. That album comes out. Well, before it comes, because his shit's so far, so gone. You, you a Drake fan, G? No, I just shout out to Drake. Oh, okay, just all right. I, that's yeah, that's all right. Cool. That, he yep. put work in. We'll just moving on. We'll just move past the that. end, right? Because you know. Um. But anyway. That album, she's working on that album. I'm very instrumental in that album. That that is her best body. If you, I this one is about to drop now. Um, and she just dropped the name for it today. Look it up. Cause she didn't give no date. That's why I hate it. But it's it's coming it's out coming tomorrow. Out to- tomorrow. Did you did you just bleep that? No, and she fucking put it out. No, the last thing I seen was on the the. The right. wall. Right. Okay, so look again, nigga, and it's up. Now, she made a post literally like today. Like okay, I, I might have missed it. Shit. Yeah, but on the wall it was like blank blank number like the zero zero eight xx or some shit. But yeah, she dropped it today. That's coming out tomorrow. Um, he said, like, "Did you just leak that? Like what the fuck?" Like, <laughs> it's like yeah, but trippy redder. Um, like yo. yeah, right. Damn, bro. But that project is that that's I'm an excited. example of what happens like when we are able to make shit make sense. And I got some unru- some unreleased shit on my computer and some other shit, but like fire. She's just one of them artists that I heard and wholeheartedly believe in and will put whatever dollars to make her shit go. And again, I'm not going to go into how much shit I've done to make sure her shit is right. But it's like, you can't do but so much fucking around her before I'm like, all right, nigga, what you doing? Like, yeah. Yeah. You know. it, she let, let's just, we're going to end it as she's one of the ones out of the seven, five Period. that when it happens, it's going to happen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and we're going to leave it at that. But what I want to do, ladies and gentlemen, um, because the, the vibe is there. Uh, this is the easiest episode I've probably had to do. Um, didn't have to pull out information. Didn't really had to not necessarily die. I forced the conversation, but the conversation was already there. So with that being said, I want to get to another record. You know what I'm saying? Um, when we first started the intro, it was OJ, OJ in the Momo. Um, Scroll down. Let's see. Dude, think, Missouri. Where's that at? Right down, here? Down. No, 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 no. Blue. Blue? Ah, there it is. Which one, though? Oh, it's just one. One record. Boom. Took me to Africa and back. We're going to do that, then. Hold on. If it plays. There we go. And that's how we're going to run it, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure y'all collect his his, his spot right now. Get on it. Yo, Nike. And then tune it like this and make the girl in like we. And then boy, if you want to fight you, I will pull off the nighty. Girl, your shape cool like ice, yeah, yeah. Girl, I saw the your body, my eyes, yeah, yeah. The wine where you're giving me party. Take my soul, make my conscience depart me. Girl, your shape cool like ice, yeah, yeah. Girl, I saw the your body, my eyes, yeah, yeah. The wine where you're giving me party. Take my soul, make my conscience depart me. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, girl Oh, you're so hot Me want to fill up your spot, so what? If the people are watch you Me still use me energy and shock you You know regular, so no bother with the bed top Race funny thing, take fuck on your head top Body jump like nigga when you twerk shit In a dish race, the mattress, your first piece Baby, me need you, no cap Make yard man breed you, no cap We have feather cheese too, no rat Change your life like crispy, you know that Wine, wine, wine Wine, 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 you know what I mean? Girl, the shape cool like ice, yeah, yeah Girl, me saw the your body, my eyes, yeah, yeah The wine where you're giving the party Take my soul, make my conscience depart me Girl, the shape cool like ice, yeah, yeah Girl, me saw the your body, my eyes, yeah, yeah The wine where you're giving the party Take my soul, make my conscience depart me No, it's time for part two. Jump in my car, ooh. We travel far, zoom, that's when we start to. No worry, bro, wow. But I can show, wow. Just mark go for wow. Shape back, go like wow. My love for you, I can't explain, nah. That travel love, my heart is plain, nah. He hurt your face, I'd fall like rain, nah. Cause you know, Africa man is more insane. I need you. How cool, na uwango. Jola feed you. How cool, na uwango. No mistreat you. How cool, na uwango. Love sweet like juice, welcome. Come from mango, hey, hey. Wama, 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 wama. Girl, the shape cool like ice, yeah, yeah. Girl, I saw the your body, my eyes, yeah, yeah. The wine where you're giving the party. Take my soul, make my conscience depart me. Girl, the shape cool like ice, yeah, yeah. Girl, I saw the your body, my eyes, yeah, yeah. The wine where you're giving the party. Take my soul, make my conscience depart me. And I saw the thing said. Girl, I'm mad, me, me not even get the thing yet. <laughs> but ain't nobody along talking. So about the DJ, I'm there. Engineer, man, the rhythm run. <laughs> First and foremost, and I've done three seasons so far, so I hope that I'm not I'm not disrespecting anybody. But I feel like this is the first island artist I've had on the show. I'm trying to think. Yeah, island-based artist. I think you're the first one. I'll take it. That's two. By the way. Yeah. Two. Yeah, award. Boom. Yeah. You got two, two. On the wall. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For real, for real. Um that's really like stunned the show and like, okay, cool. I, I'm liking the music. Especially because you came in here DJ based mm -hmm. for me. But you have a story that is artist based for real, for real. Mm -hmm. Like you have a story in music that is just phenomenal. Um But I want to ask you this, though. And it's just crazy because sometimes I like to bring entertainment in, into the podcast. For island-based natives, how do you feel about uh, Cartel being out right now? That's like the greatest thing ever. Because now I've seen a lot of I've like I've seen a lot of artists and they're just like, oh, my God, he's out. He's doing this. Oh, my God. We're so excited. It's, okay. It's not about the man mm. even though the man is fucking you know legend uh -huh. right like it's not about him okay put it like this jamaica because you're speaking uh, for them now right yeah yeah and anybody who's jamaican or, or associate of jamaica whatever would attest it's out out of many one people right that's our that's our saying that's our slogan that's our our thing mm -hmm. right So meaning, if one Jamaican made it, everybody made it, right? When you were saying both one, nigga, I won, she won. We 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 collective like that. So for Vibes Cartel to be this little kid from Portmore somewhere, like little dirty foot kid, to be the number one artist in the world, arguably, that nigga's bro. Put it like this. We, again, we're not even gonna talk about the music because it's worth ethic, worth ethic work. I can't even talk, is insanity. Like, there's no artist in the world that can put out music like him and they'll hit like him. 
Like, I can play Vibes Cartel all night. I mean, for four hours straight, and every song will be a hit. You'll be hoarse by the second hour because you know every word of every song. There's no other artist in the world you can do that with, bro. No, And, again, I will argue it. Now, if everybody understands it or not, that's different, you know. But in a room full of Caribbeans, nigga, it's him. Now, of course, there's going to be some people that say, fuck him, he's evil, he's the devil, or I'm picking Team Movado or whatever. But you can never get over the work. Like, if you just take away the, the, the bullshit, the beef. Because I think I've seen, and this is from my naive mind, mm-hmm. I've seen the the documentary that was on him beforehand mm-hmm. and i was just like oh this guy's like okay you don't want to fuck with him a little bit but uh, at the same Jamaica, bro. yeah it, but it, again and oh this reference i know people are gonna shoot me down please i got so sober, sober the dj on here he's giving me free <laughs> free clearance to say what i'm about to say sure. hopefully i'm going by shatas okay Okay, it's a good reference. He was like that, like he he had music, but in the documentary did I see, and I was just like, oh, this man was not playing. Mm-hmm. But like y'all said, like you just said, he had the 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 town, he had the the country, he had, he had the people on his back. He was doing it for them. But then I also question, it's like, is he the only one that's done it? Like, do we? Of course not. Do we? Do we just to cancel that out scale? Yes. Bob. So Bob wasn't like that. Bob didn't get a chance to do it to that scale because they killed him. Yeah. Well, and the time period, you got to think. Rob's cartel, his reign started from 2003. Think of how much shit didn't exist then, till yesterday. So he got to use all of the fucking benefits, and then he got the teachings from the 80s and 90s guys, mm-hmm. right? So he got all of that. Then you got. Bounty Killer, who is also a legend in the game. He got his blessing to hold his hand and bring him up. Then you get to go against Ninja Man, who's like God to me in, in dance on culture. Like that nigga. It, you want to know why I'm so fucking like ferocious on the stage? Ninja Man and Tony, Ma, Tony Maturani. My guys. Y- y'all could do your research. If you know, you know. But he got to take advantage of so many different things and he's a fucking intellect, bro. Like he reads. So he got to take he made the music from from the streets, from the people, mm-hmm. the culture from the people, the teachings from the, the, the guys who's already done it. Then you got reading, schooling, and shit like that. Then you take business, you start mixing in, you doing um like liquor, you making condoms, you doing skin bleaching, controversy. Understood the business of just the fucking music industry, and it's not just the music. And he put all that shit together in one person. Then, let's not mention, the nigga had like 50 to 100 people behind him, you know, pause, but like, you know, with him at all times. Yeah. So, anything, could you imagine, put it like this, even up to today, imagine anything you say, you have at least 100,000 people is going to do it. Imagine that power. So, if I say, yo, we're wearing straight jeans and white tees. Warriors, yeah, it's right. time to play. All right. If That's I say, yo, I got you, Clarks. I got you. We're wearing Clarks. Granted, Jamaica's been wearing Clarks, but now that shit's worldwide, bro. That pay attention to that first con. There's no venue in the world that can hold that nigga's ticket sales, bro. For the first concert he does, there's mm-hmm. no venue. And he's never been a good performer. Everybody knows that. But there's no venue. In Jamaica, for sure. He he had to do the same show 10 times and sell it out every time. So you think he's going to be bigger than what Travis Scott is doing? Because I feel like Travis Scott he's, is... he's Travis And Travis Scott is my guy. He He's intertwined in my career more than a little bit. And I don't even want to go down it. But that, that nigga, like... He's... I'm, I've been compared to him as far as like being like the Travis Scott of DJing without the shit that I'm talking about that I need. If I had those things, we'd go there. It would be there, 100%. But... Way bigger than fucking Travis Scott. Because Travis Scott has toys. He has in, in, just, industry behind just him. Just like say merchandise. Yeah, he, okay. no, like as far as like, you know, pyrotechnics and this, that, and third. Oh, okay, I get what this, you're saying. That shit, right? Travis Scott has three albums, four albums, whatever. Vibes Cartel has 2003 to 2024 of music. And it's not like one or two songs. It's not an album a year. Nigga, we're talking about like seven songs in a month. Like, 
ridiculous discography, bro. Ridiculous. And again, take off all of the bullshit. We're talking about him just in front of people, not the ah, the, ah, the, ah with a band. It's it's just different. And again, Travis Scott is like the pit, the pinnacle of entertainer entertainment. He's that guy. Like again, he's who I would love to be. Like I, I'm like yo. I don't know how am I not him because he's just like me in more ways than one. But there's no comparison, bro. Damn. No comparison. Damn. I'm. 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 I'm because honestly, I'm. I'm. I'm gonna do more research on Bob, I mean, Bob Cartel and stuff like that because at one point in time I was like Travis Scott, performance wise and audience wise was on the plateau of MJ. But if you're saying he's bigger than Travis Scott. Now I got to compare cartel to MJ. hundred percent. Because again, Ooh. here's the reason why you have to compare them as far as a worldwide reach. And again, you have to take away all the toys, take away the Lamborghini, take away the shit that we know Trav for, take away the Kanye associations, take away all of these things and just put him there. Just a man there. It's like, Nigga, it, it, it's ridiculous, bro. And again, I'm not saying that, that Travis Scott can't kill shit with his discography, but he can't last long enough, bro. Mm. It, you just, it's a different league. Like, that is an interesting take. So, what I would like to do, mm -hmm. real quick, what I would like to do for the audience out there that's watching, who is bigger? Travis Scott. Or vibes cartel. I just want to know. Sure. Who's you know what I'm saying? This is a, this is good good clip. Who is bigger between the two? Because I mean, you're giving me facts that I didn't even know about. You know what I'm saying? So now, I want to see what the you know what the rest of the world. Thinks. Look at the fact that you're talking about somebody you don't know nothing about should tell you everything you need to know. You didn't know that nigga existed before he came out of prison. Damn near. Yeah, I give you that one. I give you Bro. that one. There's, there's people like dog i don't even know how to say this shit bro the nigga is bigger than anything right now bro like it is not because he's an artist that beat the system and, and got out of prison no 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 it's because he's who he is bro the nigga he had so much music eventually he started recording in prison i'm almost positive but he had so much music he'd been to jail for 13 years the first 10 was just shit that he already had out like, and then you got to think too, this is what I be talking about. Like, it's not just about him. Look at the motherfuckers that we know because of him. Mm. The Popcorns, the Spice, the the Lisa Hypes, the, I mean, some of the people you know, some you don't, right? Um, the Tommy Lee Spartas, the, these people who, who exist on, from under his, um, his reign, bro, it's, it's too much. And then when you say, okay, Popcorn, everybody knows Popcorn. If you know him, then you got to know to ching ching then you gotta know drake then you gotta and drake's like yo bow all heads is gonna bow bro there's nobody that's gonna be like oh fuck that nigga even the people you had beef with <laughs> you just you can't bro like you can't at some point facts has to kick in it's like all right i'm not gonna dick ride but all right i guess so he solidified so period my i guess my next question for you is do you find your do you find inspiration from him for your music mm-hmm not at all. Cause the last two, the last two tracks that we played, they're they're similar but different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, of course, the stories are way different. Mm -hmm. The tones are way different. So, who do you take inspiration from? Nobody. As cliche as it sounds, bro, I literally just listen to the music and put out my music is not to cater to the people. Sounds crazy, but my music is to give my thoughts to the people in a way that's receptive. Like even Capricorn, that whole project was literally just me being vulnerable. Like if you listen to it, like I'm just talking about personal shit, even OJ and the Momo, that song legit was, like I said, I was like six o'clock in the morning. I said, damn, I want to put some rap songs. And all I did was rap about my past two days. Literally it. Crackhead, being surrounded by black women who try to fuck me. Goodfellow white, my white t-shirts are Goodfellows. Um, Black King, it's just me, be myself, right? Um, at the time, I had the black Tesla. So I'm like, we in the black Tesla watching Hulu, look like a black Porsche. 
I, th- um, I, I, I seen your all clips of, on those. Yeah, like all, <laughs> all of this shit is is ju- it was just my life in the past two days. Like all I do is just put myself into the music, even down to these songs. Like a lot of the stuff I make is just songs for women, like songs for women to just appreciation. I feel like there's not enough of them, so I'm like, yo, hey, here's another one, y'all. Like girls, it's cool. Even I have a song supposed to come out called Chlorophyll, right? Song's all about women and and something and something. The beat that I was going to use was from a producer slash engineer who's really who I met through the guy that I referenced earlier today when I told you I was getting here, who did some weird shit today. So I was like, I can't use that fucking beat now because all of y'all are lumped up in that weird shit that I don't even know anything about. So now Chlorophyll gets pushed back. Sorry, guys. But all I do is just make songs for women, bro. Like, that's literally it. Even, again, OJ and Momo. It's a rap song, but it's just song. It's a song that a woman could receive. <laughs> I wish they could see my face, which uh, they will earlier. I mean, yeah, later on. Yeah, yeah. But are you a woman? Do you clarify as a woman, Isaac? No, man. No, no, no. That's this. No, no. Time nah, that, 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 that. No, there's just no. Like, no. It, it's just not enough time for it, bro. Like, the toxic energy shit. It's just not. Is there's not enough niggas like me who are actually trying to help. Which, unfortunately, makes it to where when you are trying to help, you just kind of get lumped. Well, whatever, nigga. They don't take you serious. But then you see niggas like me, and then you see, like, damn, he actually is helping. Like, shout out Good Vibes. Her whole fucking identity is from me trying to help, as far as the DJ goes. She had her own interests. But when she, before, when I first met her, was actually in that same juice bar. And she was a host. Her phone, my, my number of my phone was her real name and host next to it. Just so I know it was her. Like... She was a host, and she's like, "Yo, I want to be a DJ. Like, you, you, and I've been helping her like that, Alexa, um, bro. It's too many. It's too many. Let's just put it like that. It's too many. Everybody's not as appreciative. Everyone's not as receptive, and you know whatever the case may be. But like, nah, bro. Like, it's cool. Shoutouts to him, but there's just not enough niggas that's actually trying to build." And do shit. Thank you. Next question. Next. Next. Because, uh, unfortunately, what I will say, mm-hmm. this is going to have to be our part one. But mm-hmm. I will say this, and I know y'all going to be mad as fuck when I say it. Your part two is going to come way, if you have the time and the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Your part two is going to be way quicker because you have a full... Like, some of them, they be like water guns. I give some BB guns. I even give some a Beretto, like, with two bullets. But you, you got a Draco. And, like, the information is that, 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 that. And I'm looking at these clips, and I'm just like, oh, my gosh. I gotta edit this shit? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's basically, in my head, I'm just like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Because there's so much information I'm downloading in my head right now. And I'm like, yo, nah, I need a part two. And it's going to have to be, it might have to be before this month end. Uh, just because, yeah, it's a lot. Um, but I, I cause it's so many questions I gotta ask you. But uh, one of the main ones are because you said that what you said about the artists, mm-hmm. right? The ones that don't give credit and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What do you feel? Do you feel like there's any issue in the seven five seven? Because out of the artists that I've had for three seasons, they've all had something to say in about an event or about a, a, a person, or about a situation that they would fix. So as a DJ that goes to these events, that plays spin records, that looks out for artists, mm-hmm. do you have an issue? The issue doesn't necessarily affect me personally, but it does affect the scene, which inadvertently affects me, because I care about how it looks. The people here believe their own bullshit. So, I know I'm the best. I'm better than you. And you believe that shit. So, again, what I was saying where, like, you stop doing the work. Oh, I'm cursed. I'm just stop. Fuck it. I'm just blaming on that. And everybody tries to ride a scapegoat to where you get shit like this. Again, I've been here two years. Three years. Call it two and a half. When I got here, it was only a certain amount of names got called. Like, I said, who's the who's who out here? Who's doing what? And I found out these names. The fact that I've surpassed 90% of these names, as far as notoriety goes, as far as energy, as far as just success, is an issue. These people are from here. 
They got, they have teams of people here. They have everything they could use, possibly need right here, this resource. And I'm in and out this motherfucker at will. Why is that? It's not me. It's again, they believe their own. And I've called out some of them. Y'all know who you are. I walk up to them, like, yo, I met, yo, you on some bullshit, bro. How you ain't dropped the record and da 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 da? What the fuck is going on? The fact that there is no champions out here, like, you can't name five artists that's like killing shit. We know potential all day. We know who used to have, we know that song that was hot two years ago when I first got here all fucking day. But there's no. Where's the new hotness? I'm looking to spin it. They, it's not here. Okay. Never mind. I'm, I'm going to hold that. I'm going to hold that because I, I don't want to seem biased. But I understand where you're coming from. Because mm-hmm. I feel the same thing when it comes to the entertainment world. Mm-hmm. As I, a whole. Not I, even just Virginia. As a whole. Yeah I, yeah. I watch it and I see it. And I've, I've, gotten, I've gotten flack. I've gotten hate. And I will say those who want to become part of the No Limit family, and not just when I say family networking wise, but actually partners and team members, and we we building a foundation and building an empire, mm. you will get that same hate that I've been getting for the last year and a half. And like, it's a lot, it's, a, it's been a lot of people that sat on that couch. And we're, I'm thinking we're good because... You rem- I wouldn't because you're older than me, but I will say you remind me of me when it comes to the business on your side. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh yeah, I got love for you. I'm gonna help you out, but it's envy. There's hate behind it, mm-hmm. and I've had people sit on that couch thinking they they fuck with me, and then they go behind somebody else's back to come on the show, and they're just like, oh yeah, da, 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 da. I got messages, I got screenshots, and mm-hmm. you're just like, damn. But I haven't been doing this as long. You're from, I've, when you said you're from the city and I surpassed you, I felt that so much. I right. felt it so much. Like, this This not my shit. It's, this, it's I'm, not I'm me. Gonna you, I'm going to give you a saying I heard. I didn't go to Kickatan, Pocosin. I didn't go to none of this, this shit. This is from something I heard from a guy who I don't even talk to anymore because of association with another guy. But I'm never to whatever the fuck to pick up a gem. This nigga said in like, like in passing, and I was like, fuck. He said, you either want to win or look good losing. <laughs> oh, bro, use that. fuck I'll my be, whole head I'll up. I'm going to use that one, bro. I'm going to use and that I'm one. And I'm like, these niggas look great. Losing. Fucking losing. Ooh, never mind. Man, never yo, mind. they I'm look even... great losing. And you can you can you can put it to any motherfucker you want, bro. They all gonna have the, the brands, they gonna have the, the songs, the shows, the yo's, the hoes, whatever the fuck. But when you really scale it down to it, it's like, all right, bro, let's all get a ticket to Jamaica. Oh, I ain't got my uh uh uh. Or yo, let's put some money in and put on a show. Let, let's okay, but I got five bands, match mine so we can do it. The shit get quiet. Or wait, what you riding? Let me see your car, bro. Let me see your car. Where you live? Like, granted, I'm not giving out addresses, but I'm just saying, on camera, you would think these people are these guys. And even me saying this, I might get hate from it, but you, you whatever. I show love. The, the, the gangsters fuck with me. Everybody fuck with me, so it's, it's whatever. But it's like, bro, the niggas be really taking L's in real life, and all I do is try to help them, but, like, it's unfortunate. It, that's all I can say. It, it's, it's unfortunate that uh, that's their life to live. The names, the names that I've brung, that I've brung in this building alone, have gotten me more hate. I know you might be loved mm-hmm. in 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 your and your opinion and what the people have told you. You are loved. People love sober the DJ, but now that you're on, now that you've done this show right here. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get more hate from you sitting on that couch. Hundred percent. Than anything, and, and and my boy viral, he sat on the couch and he said this shit. He mm. told me he literally sat right here and was like, "Hey, bro, it's gonna come, and when it comes, you gonna you gonna have so much love for everybody, and you're gonna want to do for everybody, mm-hmm. but they're gonna hate you." And that's one of those things that I'm getting used to the seven five seven. I wanted to know. And I wanted to hear it from you mm. because you, I've watched you. I've watched, I, and, and, and not on a creepy level, 
but I've watched the things you do. Like I'm actually watching, I'm liking, and I see the parties, and I see it. I mean, yeah, I, I didn't see. No offense, I I didn't see the part when you'd be like, you gotta make sure your hair is washed properly and shit. Like I've seen it, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, yeah, this I, I guy is a vibe. Like, he, yeah, I'm, he's I'm a he's, he's a vibe. He's he <laughs> is a vibe, and like and I'm just like. When I keep going and going and going And then you see the hate, hate, hate And I'm just okay if, if, Am I winning or not winning? If it's working, it's not working But coming from someone like you And I see it And you're very open with everything you do It's even been some shit that I've seen you do And I'm just like Nigga, you crazy? Mm -hmm. Like For example, when you were uh You were doing the twerk versus dance hall mm -hmm. event, right? And you were promoting on the street, right? Mm -hmm. And you had them glasses on mm -hmm. I was looking, I was like My flower, the sun I, I said now, what bro, the you know how the fuck was like, yo, I love your glasses. I was like, what the fuck he got on, bro? I, was, I respect it because it was just like, it took me a while for me just to be me. Mm -hmm. Just to be the anime head, to show it, like all the photos and shit like that. Like, mm -hmm. this is just me and D-Lo. This is what we did. Mm -hmm. You don't like it, you don't like it. But when I seen you like that, and I was just like, he cool with who he is and how he runs things. And people love him for what he does. And I gravitate to those people because it's just like, now I feel, I, I, I okay, I see you doing it. Mm -hmm. and it. And it's working for you. And I, I got to give you yeah, nothing but respect. It, one, thing I, one thing I was hoping to get from this um, interview, and I feel like we, we've hit it, is to just give people an actual insight of like who I am. Like who I'm talking, who they're talking to, who they see every day. Because again, like you say, everybody sees it. Like... They might not interact, you know, the likes and all that stuff might dwindle here and there. I don't get nothing less than like 120, but still, whatever. When they see me, they tell me everything I've been doing for the past month. Yo, I love your dog, bro. What's your dog? But I ain't said shit to me online, but everybody knows my whole life. You know what I mean? So it's like, I know people are watching. So saying all that to say... You might as well just put your best foot forward, bro. Because even with the the hate, it, it is what it is. But what I was getting at was like, I hope that everybody can see, I'm human. I, I do a lot of, I do all this shit y'all do. I'll be in, in the same positions y'all was in. I don't have no big fucking bank. With, let, me get, let me get rid of all the myths. Cause I've got them all. The, please do because yeah. uh, hold on before he says this. This is only part one. Yeah. Because, damn it, it, this ain't enough. I, it, we almost hit in two hours. This ain't enough. So, one, I'm not a part of any label, right? I don't, I'm not signed to anybody. Gotcha. I don't have any partnerships. Nobody is financing anything I do. There's no big bag behind me, invisible, like, here, sober, do this, and you can be great. Excuse me. No, I don't have it all figured out, okay? I don't have a team. I know what I want to do. I don't know exactly how I want to do everything. So I'm open to suggestions. I've had people say, well, I didn't help you because I thought you had it all figured out already. I thought you already, I thought you was good. That's the stupidest shit ever. I'm like, nigga, I'm not going to shy away an idea. Like, what the fuck? If we supposed to be doing this, I'm doing it for you, for you to like it. Of course I want your input. Tell me, even down to today. I was talking to this girl on the phone. She's like, yeah, let's do your mix. I, I do, like I said, I do a radio show on Monday through Friday, John Bob. And she said, I have one little critique, but I don't even want to say it, though, because I feel like you're not going to be right. I'm like, why the fuck? Why do you think I wouldn't want to hear that? I'm literally playing this shit for you to like. Tell me what you think. She said, ah, we playing R. Kelly in 2024? I was like, yeah, I'm playing R. Kelly in 2024. Like, fry me, but fucking uh, uh, move your body like a snake ma is a fucking bob. Before you continue to who, before you continue to who you who you are and you you putting out you taking out all the myths, mm -hmm. it goes back to what I said earlier. You look like a genuine dude, and like the the clips and the videos that you do, it was like, oh yeah, he's a fun dude to be around. Oh my god, he looks like a good time. But I don't know what it is. It's just a feeling. Like it was like you smile on camera and he'd be like. What you say, fuck nigga? Like, like I, just, I don't know what it is, bro. I, look, you, I, it, it's there again. It's there, bro. But I just don't lead with that shit, like, cause it's it's unnecessary. You, you just don't need. And it. And I think that's a. And I'm glad when this comes out, we gonna make a big ass clip about it. That hey, the myths are wrong. You know what I'm saying? The myths are wrong. Sober the DJ is a lot. Matter of fact, go ahead and continue. Shit, let the people hear. It. Uh, I mean that's it, man. Listen, I just want to help. 
I sound, if y'all ever want to know what it is that I do, like, to get it from another perspective, watch Kanye West's Zane Lowe interview from 2015. From there, godly. Just watch that. The first half of it, call it. First quarter of it, it's about an hour and something, almost two hours long, right? So just watch till as much as you can stand, and you'll see, not on purpose, hmm, not on purpose, but the paths are synonymous in the sense of like, yo, I get I'm going to get called this. I know y'all going to throw stones. I know I ain't getting all that. Oh, he not the hottest DJ. Oh, he did it. Everyone's going to come up with their own narrative, which is fine. But at some point, like Kanye says, my Truman showboat is going to hit the painting, meaning I'm going to go as far as I can go by myself. I need y'all. I need y'all. I need you. Like, I need everybody to be a part of what I'm doing to make this. There is no Travis Scott without Tammy. There is no, you don't even know these people. You, there's no Travis Scott without Shaq. There's no Travis Scott without that whole fucking team that he has without his aunt and, 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 uh, it's just Jordan and without any of these people. There is no Travis Scott. He needs everybody else to be a part of it. And sober to GJ exists. Again, I can, I'm a one man army to the max. I can survive by myself, but I will not thrive without everybody's input and i'm just trying to show that yo i'm not gonna blow up and say fuck y'all i'm for i'm not from here but i'm for y'all i'm for the creative i'm for the artists i'm for the people that's why i do it how i do it sooner or later somebody will see it and i might get hate for it because people might, i might be doing shit they want to do or they might feel I'm, I'm entitled i'm a plant oh yeah i'm not a plant as well i'm not a, i'm not a fucking industry plant they called you an industry plant? A fucking plant because I came here and like just took over. So like, how the fuck is he over? Bro, I came here within the first two years. There's people who's never been in these buildings. I said, I'm going to the Norva. I've been in Norva like three, four times, right? Um, I went to Richmond like twice at th- at this time. And then I was like, damn, I didn't know the National was a thing. Boom, we're in the National. Then I'm in Bro- um, Baltimore. Then if you've ever done some history, you'll see that I was all up and down Philly. Um, fucking Chris Travis show. I played Rob Banks at a Chris Travis concert while they was at the height of beef. When I was ready to get jumped because I thought it was going to jump me. Which, and again, if y'all don't know, the people who know, knows. That was like, nigga, what? I played Pressure at a Chris Travis concert. Shout out to Rec Philly. That, that was their event. And Red Bull, they sponsored it. Bro, I was just doing shit. I was doing all kind of shit, bro. All kind of shit that... It brings me back to like, yo, I'm for the people, bro. Like, let's do this shit. Let's make moves. Let's actually build. That's This is legit. As Sober to DJ, this is my first interview. Like, in person. I always do a bunch of online shits and then send the... All those. They people want a video camera. But as far as in person... Hey, he's fucked up now. Right? Hey, look. Number one. Hey, he did, hey look. He didn't make me cocky now. Number one. Number he didn't make me cocky because, now. But here's the reason why, though. <laughs> because people don't take me serious. Like, I watch... Like, I'm not going to name any other podcast in the town, but we all know them. We know the couple other ones. And they see me. Yo, everyone knows who I am. There is no, like, secret. You can't do shit out here and be hiding it. Nigga, we know you. We know what you got going on. Nah, we ain't going to fuck with you, though. <laughs> Y'all did fucked up now, boy. <laughs> Oh, ah, yeah. Oh, what well, y'all's at? Hey, look, and it's only it's only really one that I'm in competition with. The other one, never mind. I ain't gonna start. The ball. I'm not even gonna start no they shit. And, and I know, and I think yeah. you know who I'm talking yeah. about. Drop the ball. 100%. There's just levels bro, to this shit, many, bro. It's too <laughs> Sorry, many, it's, bro. It's too levels much to this shit. Bro, we we dapped up past each other too many times, and it was just like, eh. Maybe I wasn't big enough, but I'm like, nigga, what more do you want me to do? I by myself. He, once these cameras shut off, I think I know what you're about. I know who you're talking about, but yeah, we're, like we're it, you know what I mean. At some point, it's like, yo, the people got to take you serious. The perceived value has to be up, like to where they're like, okay, you're gonna meet talent is like a drop in the bucket. Talent has to meet the bag. The entity, and then the entity is who steers or who dictates the perceived value. To so where people's like, "Yo, this nigga's actually a thing." Yes, sir. Once we connect all that shit, 
That's again, you get the Travises. That's when you get the Jay Murphys. Shout out to Jay Murphy, but he has a Chico. That nigga, he's a fucking kappa. Like, shout out to them guys. But it's kind of hard to lose when you got a whole org behind you. It I'm not dissing count. them. It doesn't but count. But it doesn't count. It doesn't count. That's all oh I'm saying. Oh my God, I've said this shit so many times. It doesn't fucking count. Like, yo, again, I don't disrespect no Greek life. My sister's with it. <sighs> my family's Masonic. Masonic, we're traveling. The whole nine. I have no. It's an automatic beef. brother slash sisterhood. Yo, it doesn't you fucking me, count. If I if I t- if I had Sorry. ten people that would agree with what I said just because I said it, nigga, I'm out of here. Military the people don't even fuck with people like that, bro. It just anyways. Come on. Anyways, so that so again, shout out to all those people. But I'm, we just fighting a different fight. That's all. It's just a different fight. Everything's different. So now yeah. that I'm here, maybe. You this know, will put him in a light. You know what's about to happen. You know what's about to happen, right? I don't know. Once, once, uh, once I drop that that initial clip, where I, which my editing skills are going ham. Um, once I drop that initial clip, which mm-hmm. I'm gonna make it stupid fired, just to piss somebody off. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Be prepared. Hey, bro, can you? I t- and I know who's gonna do it first, bro. I know who's gonna do it first. So just be prepared. I'm here. Just be prepared. And I'm glad, like I said, never mind. We'll talk about it later. But yeah. what I want to do, ladies and gentlemen, I'm I want to end this episode, part one, with Sober the DJ, with one of his favorite songs. Go to Want Me, favorite song. Want Me. Want Me is the first song I did where mm-hmm. I uh, I used auto. Which, which album? You got like a single, so scroll and singles. If it's even up there, I don't know how. I don't go show all top right. Singles, singles and EPs. Yeah, want me to the right. Ah, boom. Classic gift that keeps on giving. Now is the perfect. Shout out to commercials. I fucking hate commercials. So, what I will say, I appreciate it. This has been D-Lo. If you're watching this right now, bro, I did it. Did mm. exactly what we were gonna do, um, and we're gonna keep achieving. We're gonna keep excelling. Um, this is only part one. Why? Because there was so much information in this episode alone that I'm gonna have fun with it. I'm gonna have fun. So when part two comes, it was it's gonna be more structured. It's gonna be more you based. Okay. Um. By that time, hopefully, I'll have another co-host or I have another entity in the, you know on the camera right, so uh you know what I'm saying yeah bro this ain't the end because I mean you, you're not a, a a closed book you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. you're still open and I I know just in the, the first 20 20 to 30 minutes it was so much information where I could ask 15 questions on each subject so yeah, I have to do my own homework, watch the video over, study some more, and go back on it because I want to talk about the shows you've done. I want to talk about the experiences you you know. It's you know so much. Wild too, just because we're here. All you gotta do is boom. The recently, and this is Mau Mau who's on a couple of my records. Like I said, shout out Mau Mau. He's out in Canada. Um, he's gay, right? Gay white guy. Mm. Fucking. Ripped ass gay white dude. They usually are. Right? But here's the thing. Recently, the pride community has been like, come through. That's a big market. Bro, fuck the market. It ain't even about the, that's a, like the market and all, that's all cool. But it's like the community as a whole, it's almost like we hear. I'm, I'm not gay or nothing like that, but it's more so like, the mindset that it takes to be gay in Virginia is the same mindset it takes to be a solo something, to give a fuck. Because you have to have a level of tenacity. You have to have a level of fearlessness. You have to have a, a level of like self-identity to really be able to stand in front of all these people that said, fuck you, you're not even from here. Fuck you, you're gay. Fuck you. you like whatever they're saying, the flack that we get just for existing, it's like, they feel that energy. I feel their energy. I'm like, yo, I fuck with y'all niggas. Like, we're lit right now. And of course, you know, some people try to shoot their shot. Whatever. Shout outs to them. But as a whole, it's like, yo, we here. We like, you know what I'm saying? We here. And me, even me being Jamaican, I might get my little flack, right? Whatever. Sue me. I'm half. So it don't count, right? But either way, 
that's just another another I guess thing for part two where it's just like shout out to the pride community for just like accepting me and it's not something that I like actively tried to get into or you know oh the marketing part of it and but it's like when I went to Richmond it was a, fucking, it was a gay dude. I don't remember. Oh, we met. I did a um a swimsuit swim week shit. Sang his ass off. I'm like, yo, what you got going on, bro? Like again, same type time. Then a promoter was there who's here. Same type time. This real recognized real. And it was like, yo, we gotta work. All right, cool, cool. I'm down. And they just was with that shit. And they put me in front of their people. And they people was like, yo, who's this nigga? He DJs like a gay DJ. I don't know what that means. I'm still trying to figure that part out. But it's more so like when you're able to. To, to communicate to an audience like how it's supposed to be <laughs> fucking stupid. Uh to to the audience like how they how they supposed to, whether it's a different country, whether it's a different culture. And then like, yo, he really because again, I look the same everywhere I go. I'm not like I don't put on a yarmulke because I'm in front I, of the Jews. Trust believe I didn't get I didn't get to the clothing brand because I was gonna wait to that because yeah. again that's part two. But come on, keep going. Like it just I look how I look everywhere I go. So it's it's hard for different cultures or groups to read me again because they just don't know who's this oh you about to come here and play all this bullshit but then i'm like nah nigga i play dick but nas anytime i press play what the fuck what you he a bar and i'm not but it's like i fuck with nikki shit like that it's just little things that just make me stand out in these different audiences to where i just want to just make sure i say shout out to y'all for letting me in you know what i'm saying shout outs to the roller skating community i used to go to shea booze in boston too much times, yeah, too many times. But just, just all these different like niche communities that just like fuck with me. But as a whole, I just can't get past that door just yet, which we're working on that. Like I'm <laughs> working on that. But um, yeah, man, just shout out to everybody. Shout out to everybody who fuck with Hold me. Hold on, man. wait. Okay, okay, so what we're gonna do is Uh-oh. we're gonna listen to the song. Let's do it. Want me? And then we're gonna listen to Want Me. Mm-hmm. And then I want you to give all your shout outs. Where to find you? Where to see you? Where to f- Find anything, any information. If anybody wants to join Sober to DJs, uh, I, w- I wouldn't say, I would say supporter fan group. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's how we're going to do it. Because cool. in those two minutes, I'll be back. I got to get my vape. Yeah, I'm tweaking out. I'm, I'm, I'm a vape back. You know what I'm saying? You, you'll understand later on. This is just part one. But like I said, Want Me by Sober to DJ. Cool. This is going to be fire. All you got to do is... All you got to do is <laughs> All you got to do is need me today All you got to do is want me to stay I don't need drugs, baby girl, I need you It's something see-through Come and tell me what it is, what it ain't, what it do Fuck all these people Ruby tryna show me love I just hit him with a dog Me and my niggas in the club And we throwin' hella ones Come here baby girl, what your name is? Fucking with me, I can make you famous We can ride in me in the tropics I got hella green leaves in my pocket Stop it I will never sell my soul for no money or no hoes Or no bitches or no clothes, that's a no-no And I stood on ten toes like a G never fold Tell my homies we gon' blow and we gon' blow Before I indulge in all this fame Before I start releasing them records and doing all that other crazy shit I just need you to do one thing for me All you gotta do is 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 That's it. That's all I need for you, baby girl. Just pay attention. Want me, need me, and I'll be there. Fuck the money, fuck the cars, fuck the drugs, fuck the groupies. All I want is your love, and that's a fact. So with the DJ.
Ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I was uh running for my vape, unfortunately. But this has been a fantastic episode with Sober the DJ. And like I said, this is only part one. And don't be surprised if part two comes out in the same month. Why? Because the vibe is there, it is solidified. And as long as he ain't too busy, because his schedule is crazy, he will be back in the building. Did right. you do? Are you? Did you already do all your shout outs? No, you told me. Okay, I do. Go ahead. Fine. Go ahead. Uh, I just want to say shout out. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, shout out to everybody, man. Shout out to everybody who supports me. Shout out to everybody who gives a fuck. Um, <laughs> people who's been working on their own shit, like. Because again, day to day I do it by myself, but at the same time, like there are people that I can talk to, like in my personal life, just to have a conversation. So just shout out to all you guys, um, all three of y'all, and then, shit, man, if y'all want to find me, let's go that route. Right? Y'all want to find that, me? I was hoping um, you let everything it. is sober. The DJ, it's all one word: S O B E R T H E D J. It's all one word. You can Google it, whatever the fuck. Um, anything there is to know about me, as far as the entity, sober the DJ. Um, I'm literally working on a website as we speak, so I'm gonna go home and keep doing that shit, getting that out. Merch is coming out. Um, fucking the flamingo thing is just my thing. Uh, shout out to flamingos, and uh, shit, man, that's it, bro. Like I'm, I like to keep just save saying. the flamingo thing for part two because he didn't even say anything about no damn birds. All right, so save it for part two. I, I like this guy. And I knew it was going to work. Yeah. Two years in the making, ladies and gentlemen. Till next time on the No Limit Podcast. Peace and love.